Hi there, I'm Today Lifestyle and Commerce contributor Jill Martin. The holidays are here and it's my favorite time of year, gifting season. And no need to stress, I've got you covered. I'm Today contributor Alejandra Ramos. Food and festivities go hand in hand. And I'm here with fabulous gifts for both the cooks and sous chefs in your life. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Tis the season of giving, and I'm here with the most fashionable finds at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop Today, Gifts We Love. Hi, I'm Today Lifestyle and Commerce contributor Jill Martin, and we have a special show for you today with all of our favorite finds just in time for the holiday season. I've rounded up the best gifts that you can personalize and customize for anyone on your list. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text GIFTS to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started with these gorgeous initial necklaces from Jennifer Miller Jewelry. Now these are CZ initial necklaces, but what a bold statement they make. The brand says these necklaces are best sellers, it's gold plated, and the initial is laid with cubic zirconia gem. And what's great about these necklaces is they come on a paper clip chain, which means you could wear them all year long at different lengths. Gift this dainty necklace to your mom, your sister, or your best friend, and while you're at it, gift one to yourself to match your loved ones. And I love layering, as you know, really a beautiful gift. All right, let's move on to that gift that's not just personalized, but can also be customized. Daily edited customized phone cases. I actually use these. These phone cases from the Daily Edited are super chic, and you can make it your own. Choose everything from the color and style of the case as well as the font, the color, and the size of the name or monogram you wanna put on it. So many options to create your own design. And these cases are available for both iPhone and Android phones. This makes a great gift for someone who just got a new phone and needs a stylist accessory to show it off. And it also makes the person feel like you really put the thought into it. Here's another gift you can share with loved ones to remember all your special memories. Minted Heart Snapshot Mixed Photo Art. I love this. This photo art takes 30 of your favorite photos and memories and turns it into a unique collage in the shape of a heart. How beautiful is that? It's so simple. You just upload all your photos to the website and they do the rest for you. You can customize the type and color of the frame and it comes in a variety of sizes from an eight by eight inch frame all the way up to 44 by 44 so you can really make a statement. It's the perfect gift for a significant other or any family member or friend, especially if they live far away. Fill up a frame with photos of your kids and gift it to their grandparents. It can be both a beautiful piece of art to hang on your wall and a family keepsake. We've also got the perfect piece of art for those pet owners on your list who are obsessed, we all know them, with their furry friends, a custom pet portrait. Impersonate me, custom pet portraits. Choose your favorite photo of your pet and upload it to the company site. You can personalize it even more by adding their name, choosing the background and color, and the frame, or you can make it a canvas. The portraits are printed on gallery quality paper, and the frames come with ready to hang attachments. The company says their artists spend about two hours creating an illustration of your pet to make sure they capture every detail, and they're hand drawn. What's great is they can fit up to four pets in one portrait which is great for those family and friends who may have adopted a dog or cat or two or three over the last year. And look, the real Rocky, and look at the Rocky in the frame. Isn't that amazing? All right, moving on to some personalized gift ideas for the kitchen and beyond. The Mark and Graham Monogram Stemless Wine Glasses. These Mark and Graham Stemless Wine Glasses are the perfect host or hostess gift to bring to your next holiday party this season. Imagine with a glass of wine, beautiful. These transparent glasses come in a set of four in a few color options, clear, blush, pink, or a multicolor pastel variety. I love that. The brand is known for their signature monogrammable products, so of course you can monogram these glasses too. Choose from a whole host of fonts, designs, and colors for the text, so you can really make it personal. I think this is just such a beautiful gift. The brand says they're made from shatterproof plastic and they're dishwasher safe. So they feel substantial, but they won't break. Perfect for dinner parties and get togethers this holiday season and all year long, one of my favorites. From hard beverages to hot beverages, here's another gift idea for personalized drinkware. 
the Rifle Paper Company for Anthropology Garden Party Monogram Mug. These monogram mugs from Rifle Paper Company for Anthropology are beautifully crafted with floral design and a gilded monogram letter of your choice. This line of mugs was made exclusively for Anthropology to celebrate Rifle Paper Company's 10th anniversary, so you really can't find these anywhere else. If you want to gift something that feels personalized at a great price point, this mug will do the trick for almost anyone on your list, and they'll think of you every time they drink coffee or tea. The next customizable gift is perfect for anyone who spends way too much time in the kitchen. Personalized mall kitchen mats. From classic to modern designs, you can customize these mats with your family name, monogram, or a favorite quote. That's cute, right? These mats are not only cute, but they're comfy too, which is so important. A perfect gift for the dedicated dishwasher or chef of the family, I'm the dishwasher. They also work great in front of the kitchen doorway or in the front door that leads to the patio or backyard. So they're so versatile because they'll catch all the dirt that your family members drag in after having all that fun. And lastly, we have something for all the handy people on your list. We couldn't forget about them. The Victorinox Swiss Army Knife Go Classic. This year, when it comes to gifting for your special guy or girl or dad or brother with the Huntsman Swiss Army Knife from Victorinox. And of course, you can personalize it. And our crew was just saying how great it is as a family heirloom to pass down from generation to generation if you want to put your family name on it. Choose from eight different colors and patterns and print the name or initials on the front or back. It comes with 15 functions and includes scissors, a corkscrew, and a wood saw. It's also small enough to put in your pocket, as you know, and tow it around for outdoor activities whenever you might need a tool at the ready. Okay, let's run through all the products one more time so you can get shopping. The Jennifer Miller initial necklaces, the daily edited phone cases, the minted photo art frame, the custom pet portraits, the stemless wine glasses, the monogram mug, the personalized kitchen mats, and the Victoria Knox Swiss Army Knife. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Well, that's it for personalized gifts. Up next, Alejandro Ramos is sharing kitchen gadgets and appliances big and small that are oh so giftable from a fan favorite pan that dazzles amateur and professional chefs alike to a set of oil and vinegar containers that are chic enough to display on your countertop. All that plus more, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. I'm today contributor Alejandra Ramos, and I'm excited to share great kitchen gadgets that you can gift your foodie friends, at home chefs, or even those that don't know their way around the kitchen. I've got you covered with essentials like a cult favorite pan that can cook just about anything to unique finds that'll make great host gifts this holiday season. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text gifts to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you. So let's jump right in with this eye-catching elevated kitchen essential, sheet pans. This set comes with two super adorable quarter sheet pan sizes. This is the perfect size, whether you just got a little cookie craving or you're making dinner. You can cook the veggies on one, the fish or the chicken on the other. They come coated in this beautiful non-stick ceramic that comes in these gorgeous colors. You've got this blueberry cobalt blue, or just hunter green, and my favorite is that raspberry pink up in front. Let's move on to another item that can go straight from the oven to your table, and this one's great for families. The Nordic Ware Pizza Stone Set. So I've got a pizza stone at home, and this is perfect for making those restaurant-quality style pizzas with that perfect amount of chew, the perfect char, amazing flavor in your own home oven. What's fantastic about cooking with stoneware is that it retains heat evenly and it also absorbs moisture. So that's how you get that perfect crust every time. Now, if you don't like to make pizza from scratch, you can actually do what I confess I did today and get one of those frozen pizzas. You can still bake it in your oven on the pizza stone, but you're gonna get that amazing texture. It's really gonna upgrade that pizza night. This is a really fantastic one. And I love that those handles really make it easy to carry so you don't have to worry about bringing that from the oven to your table. So you've probably seen these next few kitchen items all over social media. They've become cult favorites to at-home chefs of all levels. This is the Our Place Always Pan Set. So this pan has sold out multiple times and with good reason. The brand calls this a do-it-all wonder that was designed by cooks to replace eight pieces of traditional cookware. So this is a fry pan, a saute pan, a steamer, a skillet, a saucier, a saucepan. Yes, those are two different things. A nonstick pan, and it has a built-in spatula and spoon rest. Whew, amazing, right? So it's really perfect for anyone that has say a small kitchen, not a lot of storage space, or someone that's just getting started in the kitchen and doesn't have all those pots and pans that they need, this is gonna get them set up with just one gift. It comes in a bunch of beautiful colors, looks beautiful on your stove top, and of course, also on the dinner table. So we've got all that wonderful functionality in the pan, but Our Place also made the perfect pot. So the Our Place Perfect Pot replaces those larger things in your kitchen. Think that Dutch oven, the roasting pan, that big giant pot you always pull out every time you're gonna make pasta. This sort of takes a place with all of that in one. It's got that same multi-use functionality as the pan, but it's better for making those big pots of soups, the chili, I mean, this is like that chili season, right? So this is absolutely perfect for that. And what's really cool is that it was designed with a lid that has a built-in colander already. So you can just pull it right out in that same pot, no need for anything else. And this comes with a built-in custom roasting rack that you can use for roasting, say a small roast chicken or some vegetables, get those really delicious crispy potatoes. They really did think of everything so we've got space-saving products, but we've also got time-saving products that you can gift. I love this Instant Vortex Mini Two-Quart Air Fryer. Now, air fryers have probably been one of the hottest appliances in the kitchen world for the past couple years, and that's with good reason. They are essentially countertop convection ovens that use hot air that circulates all around your food to give you those crispy, crunchy, amazing textured foods that we all love. Think French fries and buffalo wings all the good stuff. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic, such a great time saver. And what's fantastic about this two quart size is that it's perfect for those who don't have a lot of counter space, maybe don't have a lot of storage space. It's a good amount for maybe one or two people. So think singles, college kids, anyone setting up that first kitchen, or anyone that really wants to try out the functionality of an air fryer, but doesn't really have the space for the big guy. 
Now, if you do have a little bit more counter space, they do also make a bigger version. So this is the Instant Vortex 5.7 quart air fryer. It's fantastic if you're into entertaining. Now, you heard me say instant, and that's right, that is the same instant that makes the instant pot. So you know this is a brand that knows their way around a kitchen. So if you've got less space, Check out that mini one. If they've got a bigger kitchen, grab the big one. Either way, they're gonna have fantastic meals and they're gonna love you for it. Now, this next product isn't just another time saver. It's also a really beautiful appliance. This is the Bodum Electric Kettle. I love the gooseneck shape of this. It's got these wonderful cork handles that stay cool. And what's really great about this is it just saves you time. So whether you are a coffee drinker, a tea drinker, maybe you just love a cozy bowl of ramen or instant oatmeal, you can use your kettle to boil that water in seconds. And it's got that one touch button. So you fill it with water, you hit the button. Once it's ready, it shuts off. I love that auto shut off, especially during those busy mornings. I don't need a kettle screaming at me, right? Love that beautiful stainless steel or you've got the matte black. No matter what their kitchen looks like, this is gonna look absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of giftable items that'll help add those finishing touches to your meal. I love this set of oil and vinegar stoneware containers from West Elm. You get this beautiful bone white version, the charcoal gray. It's a nice kind of matte stoneware. It's really elegant, really chic. This is something that's wonderful for someone that's an entertainer. They're just gonna look so elegant on their dinner table or on their countertop. Whether they're cooking, they can use it right in the pan and then they can bring it to the table once you're enjoying dinner. And last but not least, something that'll bring your gift tea that farm to table feel without the farm. Modern Sprout Grow Kits. These are absolutely wonderful whether you've got curious kids or anyone that wants to try their hand at gardening but doesn't really have those skills. You do not need a green thumb for this. You can choose from the mint or the basil to add a little something special to your dishes or for that spa feel in your kitchen, they've got lavender and eucalyptus the perfect gift for cooks, aspiring gardeners, or just about anyone who wants to grow plants in their kitchen without any fuss. All right, so let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the sheet pan set, the Nordic Ware pizza stone set, the Our Place Always pan set and perfect pot, the instant mini air fryer and 5.7 quart air fryer, the electric kettle, the beautiful oil and vinegar stoneware containers, and the modern sprout grow kit. That's a wrap on Gifts from the Kitchen. Up next, Chassis Post has the best fashion finds for everyone on your list in Style Finder. From the softest pajamas for both women and men to the most adorable mommy and me dresses. Stay tuned for more Gifts We Love.
Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back with more gifts we love in Style Finder. From the softest pajamas for both gals and guys to matching holiday dresses for moms and their minis, we got gifts for just about anyone on your list. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text gifts to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Pajamas are an easy go-to gift for your friends and family, and these are both stylish and cozy. So first up, we have a gorgeous set. It's a take on the classic menswear pajama, which I think is so chic. And the top has everything we look for in that sort of classic menswear style. It's got the contrast piping. It's got the great button-down top. And it is nice and roomy, so it's easy to sleep in. Also, I love that it has a little bit of feminine flair. It's got a little swing silhouette. So it makes it really flattering. And let's say your giftee has a few pair of pajamas. You can actually try this fabulous nightshirt. It's kind of like an elongated version of the pajama top. It's got a shirt tail hem. That just means it's a little shorter in front, a longer in the back for a little bit of coverage. And don't worry, we have pajamas for the men in your life too. These PJs from Tommy John are so unbelievably soft. And I love the idea of upgrading your favorite fella's sleepwear or loungewear. And they actually come with pockets that are functioning pockets. And this is really great because if you're wearing them around the house and you're lounging, it kind of doesn't feel like you're wearing your pajamas. But they're also really slim profile, so they're easy to sleep in. And if you want to add to this set a perfect complement, is this fabulous lounge hoodie. It's made out of fabric that is just as soft. It's actually a heathered stretch jersey. Look at this silhouette. It's not too oversized, but it's roomy enough to be super duper comfy. And what we love about the lounge hoodie is you can wear it around the house, you can sleep in it, or it's good looking enough that you could wear every day. And if your guy or your dad or any other man in your life has enough pajamas, we've got one of the number one quintessential men's gifts ever, a fabulously festive plaid flannel shirt. This is from The Gap. It's a 100% organic cotton flannel shirt. It's mid-weight. It kind of feels like a warm hug. And you know, guys can be difficult to shop for, right? And I feel like a really good looking flannel shirt is always a winning gift because you know, it's plaid. It's such a big trend, so it feels festive. It feels gifty, but they can wear it all year long. And what guys love about this shirt is the cut. So it's an easy, straight cut. It's kind of loose, but not oversized. It's really comfortable to wear. It hits at the hip, so that means he can wear it untucked or out. And it makes a really great layering piece, so he can wear it over a t-shirt. If you size up, he can even wear it over a hoodie. And guess what, gals? Guys aren't the only ones who can wear this shirt. In fact, ladies can wear these too. I think this is a great, great gift. So let's move on to accessories. And we've got the most perfect and practical gift for any woman on your list. And I have to say that pretty much every woman I know is always on the hunt for that perfect tote. It really is one of the hardest working accessories in all of our fashion arsenal. This little tote is called the Mini Reversible Faux Leather Tote and Wristlet. First of all, it's reversible. So that means it's like two bags in one. And that's not all. You can actually change the shape of this bag. So see these grommets here? These actually connect the removable shoulder strap. But you can actually push the grommets in to create more of this little square shape, or you can pull them out to create more of a sloping silhouette. So I love that this bag is so incredibly versatile. Plus, it comes in five different color combinations. So here we have the black and wine combo. Here we have the leopard print and black combo. And you guys have heard me say this, but I promise it is true. Leopard is the new neutral. It will go with absolutely everything in your closet. And here we have the reverse version of the wine and black combo. So you guys can see it from the other side. So this really does make a great gift for the woman on your list who loves accessories or handbags.
This next gift idea is just the thing for the jewelry lover on your list. Here we have the Pisa gold bead stackable bracelets. And the more, the merrier. And there's so many beautiful styles here. We've got the initials, we have fun charms, little hearts here, both pave and also enamel. And what's so fun about these as well is, you know, they're great for jewelry lovers of any age. And I love that this is a gift that you can keep on giving. So for example, for the holidays, you can give one or two. And then when their birthday rolls around, you can give another, another occasion. Maybe it's a graduation, then you give another. So you can help the recipient build their own beautiful stack of bracelets. And the price is really affordable. So if you really want to wow that fashionable gal on the go of any age this year, these are Rothy's. So we've got the point, which is their OG flat that sort of put them on the map. And we've also got sneaker styles. What people love so much about these shoes is that they're incredibly innovative. Now, the thread with this knit, which is super duper comfy, is actually made out of recycled plastic bottles. And the brand says that they have repurposed over 40 million plastic bottles since the brand was founded, which was 2016. And another thing that is just so exciting about these shoes is that they are machine washable. Yes, I mean, even the flats. How cool is that? And they come in so many adorable colors and patterns. They are fantastic for any age. They even make styles for kids. And lastly, let's talk about this showstopper. This has been a huge trend all year long. The nap dress, and this is the original that started it all, the Hill House nap dress. And the only thing that is better than one Hill House nap dress is a little mommy and me combo. This is truly the ultimate gift for any mommy and me duo, right? Hill House actually dropped a new collection of fall, winter, and year round styles that are just gorgeous. And not just for moms, as we said, but also for the little gals too. And so for all of you that are maybe new to the nap dress trend, let me tell you a little bit about it. So essentially, it's a dress that feels like you're wearing a nightgown, but it is so stylish that you can wear it absolutely anywhere. And here's some of the hallmarks. It's got a great, very easy to wear, very comfy A-line skirt here. It's midi length. It's got a wonderful stretchy smocking here at the top. And it's got the signature wonderful ruffle strap. And these fabrics in the new drop are just so sumptuous. Here we have this gorgeous, luxurious velvet, and I'm loving all the colors. This beautiful burgundy, a gorgeous emerald green, but they also have some timeless prints and the fact that you can be so incredibly comfortable, so incredibly stylish, and do it with your little mini puts this gift over the edge for me. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Nordstrom Moonlight Pajamas and Night Shirt, the Tommy John Second Skin Sleep Pants and Lounge Hoodie, the Gap Flannel Shirt, the Mini Reversible Faux Leather Tote and Wristlet, the Bobble Bar Pisa Bracelets, the Rothy's Flats and Sneakers, and the Hill House Home Mommy and Me Ellie Nap Dresses. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on Style Finder gifts and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorite gift ideas for the holiday season. Tune in next week for even more gifts we love. Thanks for watching. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. Darn. Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook, but I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, Darnell Super Chef Ferguson is gonna teach me his tricks for the most important meal of the day, breakfast. 
We're making an American style omelet with all the fixings, the crispiest candy bacon, and a classic pancakes that everyone in my family will love. I'm feeling pretty confident about this one and I love breakfast, so let's get started. Darnell Ferguson, thank you for coming all this way. I really love breakfast. I even like breakfast for dinner. Do you ever do that? See, that's what I was going to say. You know, we can do, we're going to do breakfast, brunch, and some brinner. Okay, you know? exactly. Yeah. I love brinner. Our plan for today is one, Savannah will learn how to cook a flawless sunny side up egg. Two, we'll cook an American style omelet. Three, sprinkle brown sugar and grind pepper for candied bacon. Four, make the pancake batter. Five, use the griddle to make the pancakes. Six, plate and serve. This is probably gonna make you laugh. I don't really know how to fry an egg. I mean, okay. I've tried it before. I don't I don't know, it just, I don't know how to flip it over. Could we just learn that basic thing first? Yeah, so since you don't know how to flip it over, let's start with sunny side up. Okay. Which is my favorite style of eggs. All right. right? The least cooked egg yes. is a sunny side up egg. Then you have over easy, you have over medium, and every egg keeps getting cooked more. We have our eggs right here. Mm -hmm. okay. Little one-on-one for cracking eggs is yes. never crack it on the corner. Okay. Do you crack it on the corner at home? Um, yeah. From here on out, you're not going to, okay? Yeah. So we're going to crack it on a flat surface. Well, down. but then see, that wasn't Perfect. very good. Perfect. See, that was easy. Should I try it again? Yeah, try another one. There Just let me try. Okay. I, this is the only way to learn, You I were think. strong. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, that Perfect. was better. Perfect, see? Round two is there now. Practice makes yep. perfect. Okay, so now. So, we're going to lightly just let that egg just fall right into the pan. I see you just did yolk last. Was that on purpose? Oh, no, I don't have a choice. The egg is in control this year. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's going to do what it wants to do. I'm just here as a bystander. Okay, the egg is driving. <laughs> I'd be worried. I'm already feeling a little stressed like it's going to burn. No, it's not going to burn. It's okay. very low temperatures. Okay. Very low. So you don't have to worry about that. And it shouldn't stick because it's non stick pan. Yours looks like something that is not a true, like, egg, how perfect that looks. I mean, it really does. It, it kind of looks fake. Yeah, it does. Like, yours doesn't even look like a real egg. That's how good you are. <laughs> you see, that's the confidence you need. So now, you're good for my good for my confidence. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of butter, okay. right? And then what? And then once it melts down, mm -hmm. we're going to take our spoon mm -hmm. and we're going to just put the butter over the egg whites. Okay, that's... And that's going to help cook it. That's cool. So you're taking a hot liquid yes. and you're putting it over your over undercooked eggs. But not on the yolk, just on the whites. Just stuff. on the whites. Okay. There you go. I'll show you this perfect egg, which is almost done. Only yes. has about another 30 seconds. How do you know it's almost done? It'll be firm. Okay. So now it's finished. Okay. Now our sunny side up egg, you've done this. Mm -hmm. Easy, just like a pro. Okay. Now we can put it on our plates. Wow. And grab your toast plate. Okay. Making eggs one of the easiest things, but I will tell you this. If you ever want to know how great a chef is, yes. tell them to make you eggs. Really? Why? It takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. And How do you get it off the pan? So you, it just want to fall right on off. Oh, you're It'll just going to kind of like yep. slide it. Just slide it right on off. Okay. We have a little flaky sea salt. Okay, yes. This looks incredible, by the way. Well, you did it. See? Well, look at this. Okay. And then but, we got a little black pepper if you like it. How do you know though? I guess I'm still obsessed with this, like the yolk. How do I know if it's like runny or thick enough? The yolk is the easy part. Okay. You want it runny. It's right. the it's the whites okay. that you want cooked. Okay. So the whites are cooked, the yolk is runny, mm -hmm. that's sunny side up. Look and at it, us. Toast. Just two chefs yep. making eggs. Cheers. <laughs> yes. You wanna try it out? This is what everybody wants. Oh my here. gosh, so good. And of course, I like to mop it up with the toast. Yes. Mmm. That's delicious. So good. Darnell, I think we're ready to graduate to something even trickier. So you ready to go into omelet making? I am. So let's have a good toast to those sunny side of eggs that we made. We always have a cocktail on the show. I love it. I think we're mimosing today. <laughs> Let me see. Mmm. -hmm. That's delicious. Ease up on the orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> Omelets are fun. There's not a lot of things you cook that are fun to cook, but omelets are fun to do. Okay, I'm into this. They're fast, they'll make you feel like you're in the NBA for a little bit, because you can do it and you'll get your confidence up. The first thing you want to do is what we call mise en place. We have everything laid out first, and then we want to make sure our knife skills are perfect, so the first thing we're going to actually do mm -hmm. is the ham. I've learned a couple things about knives. You're doing great. Okay. There you go. I worry about your hands being out like that. I know. <laughs> actually, when I took piano lessons when I was six, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clorette made us do the piano like this, you know? You're supposed to have curved fingers. That's yeah. what, I need to remember that. It's a great way. So just small pieces, okay. consistent sizes. Okay. That way the omelet is pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. This looks so good. Okay. 
All right, chopped enough. We got plenty of ham. Yes. Ham yeah. is my favorite, though. So good. Ham, wait till you try the candy bacon. Oh, It's going to okay. be your new favorite. I All know right. Your kids are going to love it, by the way. Let's do our eggs. Eggs, now. okay. I, I learned from a very wise chef. Never on the corner, okay. always here. Now so we whisk. whisk it. Okay. I know this from scrambling. Yes. I usually do it with a fork. Does it matter? No. Okay. Whisk is we're gonna put more air into it. So a little salt and pepper in here. Okay, oh yes, always salt and pepper. Okay. Go. Like this much salt, or is that too much? No, that's great. Like what about Remember, more? you can always add more later. Okay, I know. I, I tend to under salt, but now I've been told by so many of you chefs to put more salt that I might be over salting. How's that? Good? That looks great. Looks great. Okay. We'll whisk okay. that together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever put milk in it or no? Scrambled eggs, I like to put the fat in there. I like to put the milk in there. And it stretches out your eggs so you all have kids to cook for at home. Yeah. So I have eight kids. Six who stay at my house full time. So. Oh my gosh. That's why I call my wife my junior chef because she's always cooking for juniors. Oh. So. <laughs> That's amazing, wow. Okay. Before, we're gonna put a little butter in here. We're gonna yes. let it foam up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is my big question about omelet making. When do you put the toppings in? So there's no right answer to that. Okay. You put it in before, like we're going to do today, yeah. and let them cook a little bit. You and mean you put the, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You put the vegetables in before the eggs? Yes, that is one way of doing it. Okay, wow, you're blowing my mind. Now right? let's go ahead and put whatever vegetables and meats you want to put inside. Okay, so it. this would be when I put the spinach in. Yes. Which I don't usually like spinach, but I want to learn, so I'm putting It'll help it in. soften it up a little bit. Now these are big old leaves. Should I have chopped those small ones? No, they're going to cook down. Mm, I'll put a couple peppers. So we have this going, and remember, all these meats are cured meats, so mm. they're already cooked enough. Oh, okay. Cooking the meats. Got it. They're right? more like heating them up. Exactly. Okay. Let's go ahead and pour our eggs in. Okay. So this is enough? That's enough. I don't have to wait for these to be brown no. or anything? Okay. No. Okay. There you go. Pour it right in there. Okay. Ooh. Fancy. Okay. All right. So now go ahead and scramble your egg a little bit. Okay. Because we want to get everything evenly incorporated. Okay. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going to let it set. Perfect. Right, get over there. I want it to look like yours does that. <laughs> So look, now I'm going under my egg a little bit, mm -hmm. allowing the runniness to run off oh. and go underneath it. Nope. So you don't have I don't have any runniness. So you have a little bit right well, there. Well, right there. Yep. Should I just make a hole for it? There you go. We'll help each other out. Okay. There you go. And then no, you don't have much. Okay. Oh, but I want that. Oh, I see. So like any of this little extra bits. Yep. Now it's cooking. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it like this for one second. So do you feel like a spatula like this is the good implement, like the you easiest? You need a rubber spatula. A rubber spatula. Yep. Okay. Would you rather just put our toppings right here and fold it over, or do you want to flip an omelet first? I think I need to learn to flip. Okay, we're going to assist the flip. It's called okay. an assisted flip. Assisted flip. I have my spatula under a little, yes. and I'm going to use that to help me flip my egg over. Oh, the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, no way can I do this. Your no left way. hand is hard yes, for left-handed left left people. Everything's hard for us. So go towards the top. Wait, what? Oh, because yeah. I was gonna I was gonna flip it that way, but oh, you don't that's think more I... comfortable. I'm not left-handed. Okay, so yeah. So everything's different for people okay, who are. Yeah, yep. we're special us. So go under a lot. Okay, and then you want to assist okay. it with the flip over like that. I'm scared. <laughs> it's I don't like know. jumping in a pool. I can't. Okay, one you have it. I know it's gonna fail. Okay, one, I don't wanna ruin it. See? See? No, you're good. but it didn't. Now you go back and you just get the rest over. Okay, but See? that wasn't good. That like, was good. Is it supposed to? No, I did it wrong. No, you're perfect. But is it? Look, it's folded now like a burrito. <laughs> you're going to fold it over again. It's okay. Okay. So now you'll so put your cheese inside. just leave it, just roll inside. with it like that? Yep. Okay. Now you'll put, I like Gruyere cheese. Okay, me too. Which so one's I, that? that <laughs> <this> <laughs> that's that one, yes. I like that too. So put it on the furthest point of your omelet. Oh, that's interesting. Why is that? Because you're going to flip it over and you want all that heat to sit right on top of it. I'm gonna do, which, is this sausage? That is sausage. Sausage is yes. my favorite. Ham yeah. is my favorite. I'm going for it. There you go. And all, all on the side too again. Yep, all on that okay. side. Mm -hmm. okay. You did a good job flipping. Thank you. I, you did. I don't know, I want it, but it, was it supposed to be like half like this or was it supposed to really be covering the see, whole thing? this can? is at home cooking. You know, now if you were in the restaurant and we had to, see this is what you're about to eat at home. So I that know. is perfect for at home. But I want to get an A, <laughs> Darnell. I want to so be that's like. That's an A, A minus, but okay. it's still an A. Okay, okay, you know? so okay. Then I want to flip my egg okay, over we're flipping to the other again. side. Oh, like another folder, like yep. this, like that? Yep, just fold it over. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, assisted, assisted with Darnell. Now, now it's getting kind of brown. Is that too brown? No, you're fine. 
I mean, look, this is a disaster. That is good. No, you know it isn't. And now this, these guys are falling out. Well, technically, you're going to eat them anyway. Okay. So you got to keep your eyes on the prize. But I don't think they're getting too warm. There you go. Come on, Darnell. You know this is a fail. You don't have to be nice about it. Can I just creep those guys in? Yes. There? Okay. All right. And then we put it on our plates. That's it? Yeah, that's you, it. I wouldn't flip it again? I feel no. like it needs another flip. Flip yours one more time. See? There you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like to flip a lot. This is the saddest omelet. You know it. We all know it. Let's compare. Oh. Not wonder who bad. did what. <laughs> it doesn't so, look that bad. No, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're being hard on yourself. Okay. This is just one part of breakfast. Oh. We still have to do the candied bacon and the powerful pancakes. Oh, okay. So, so I'll go these get, get these on the table. All right. Everybody loves bacon. No, everyone loves candy bacon. I was gonna say, usually if I make bacon, I just put it in the microwave. Can we still be friends? We can be friends, because if you're cooking, that means I'm eating. Friends, okay. So okay. Yes. <laughs> but candied bacon seems intimidating. Yes. Super Chefs, our restaurants, are the home of the candied bacon. Okay. This is our specialty. You cannot even come in and ask for regular bacon. We don't offer it. How do we do it? So I'm gonna open up the pack. Okay. I'll open it for you. You yeah. can get us one, I'll get us a half a cup of brown sugar okay. in that bowl for you. Okay, all right. Like just pack it a little? Yeah, pack it okay. down. We're gonna lay our bacon okay. sideways. So if you're cooking bacon at home, mm -hmm. the reason why the microwave isn't the best method yeah. is because it shrivels down the bacon. Well, that's true. Yep. Whereas if you cook it on the sheet tray or you cook it in the oven, it keeps the bacon the same length as the bacon. Now you have this like wire rack and foil. What's is that necessary? It's really necessary for candy bacon. Okay, okay. So we have the wire rack, that way the bacon doesn't cook in its own fat. So how'd it, you get into cooking there now? I got into cooking by watching Emerald on TV. He was my inspiration. He was very unique. And if I wasn't going to be a chef, I was going to be a Navy SEAL, so he had a really good uniform on. And uh -oh. I wanted to wear a uniform. <laughs> so he just, Now you have a chef's uniform. Yeah, now we have chef coats, which everyone has to wear all the, I'm going to get you a chef coat. Oh, I, well, yep. I don't know if I deserve it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to freshly crack black pepper on top of it. How much? How much pepper do you like? A little bit. I only like a little. So I don't put a, we'll put a little bit on there. See, okay. that's the thing about cooking. It's about the person, not the recipe. I'm going to go lot. right down one piece first. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. See, you're a rebel. You just went everywhere. I, like I know. That. It's like, well, I didn't know. Now I see I should have watched you first. Yours is more classy. No, so you're putting a lot on there. Well, I want to taste you something like it, besides yeah. sweet. Because mm -hmm. black pepper also has a little heat to it. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to sprinkle brown sugar on top of each piece. So, Be yeah. as attentive as you would like to. Okay. There we go. So if you want to grab these two and take them to the oven, I can okay. open the door for you. Oh, we're you. doing oven, we're not frying. Yeah. No, always at home. Turn your oven on 400 degrees, yes. put your bacon on a rack, and just put a timer. Oh, you really? You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. It'll come out perfectly, and it won't lose all of its size. No. We'll go ahead and put these in the oven on 400, 400. for 25 minutes. Okay, got it. Does it matter which rack? No, because we're going to use both of them. Okay. Now, if we had the broiler on, then it matters with track. Okay. But since we have it on bake, it won't matter. All right. See, you are almost there with candied bacon. That now. wasn't that hard. No, that was easy. Yeah.
pancake time. Okay. So I gave you a personal recipe of mine. So, you know, I worked on this for years to perfect it. This is the Darnell Ferguson perfect pancake right Yes, here. this okay. is it right here. So we're gonna start with the batter first. Bye bye this quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bye bye. Okay. So what we're gonna do first is our wet mix. We're okay. gonna start with our version, well my version of buttermilk. Okay, two cups. Now, why not just use old buttermilk? Like, why are we using our own? Okay, so this is what happened. In the restaurant, mm -hmm. buttermilk is so expensive yeah. compared to regular milk mm -hmm. that I could not feasibly charge people what I had to for how much the buttermilk was oh. costing me. So, I figured out how to make the same exact okay. thing happen. So, milk plus, oh, this looks like a quarter cup of, yep, of the vinegar. Still vinegar, yeah. Okay, and am I just stirring this up? Nope, just let it sit. Oh, okay. Let it sit, the curdle a little bit. You see it's getting a little thicker Oh, up I top. do see that. See, like oh, okay. buttermilk would get. Interesting. Yep. So we have that going on. Now let's go ahead and crack three eggs inside of here. Okay. There we go. There for your shells. Okay, yeah, all right. Thank you. You you wanted to use the side of this at first. I could tell. I did. <laughs> I but I fought the urge because you taught me, and I don't want you to think I'm not listening. I am definitely Thank you. listening. Thank yeah. you. Let's try this last egg one-handed. Yeah. So the key with one-handed oh. eggs is you just want to separate it like this. That way, when you crack it right in the middle, you're just pulling it apart. Okay, now, I don't know how this is gonna it go. It was a little nervous when I had to learn it my first time. There you go. Now you just pull it, there you go. Look, ah, look at Stop. you! Oh Good my gosh, job. I did, I would, I would high five you, but I'm all yoky. <laughs> okay, now am I whisking these? Yep, you're gonna go ahead and whisk them okay. together. Am I trying to get air like I was to the other? Nope, the just omelet? incorporating, okay. there you go, perfect. So is that good? Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and add our vanilla to our eggs. Okay, let me see. It says, Two, I'm obsessed with three, a one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. One teaspoon of vanilla going right in there. This is our wet mix. That's it. So you can go ahead and pour this inside of here if you like. Okay. Go See that? Flow. That's what we want right wow, there. Wow, look at that. How interesting, it's all lumpy. Yeah, okay. just like buttermilk. Yeah, okay. Yep, so let's mix. So now this is where I could get kind of messy. So we'll move that to the side now, because you is, have it done and it's perfect. Is it whisked you know, enough? Well, it's going to be whisked enough now. Uh, <laughs> So now we have our dry mix. We have our mm -hmm. flour here. Yes. We're going to add sugar. We are sugar. adding three, three fourths a quarter cup. cup sugar. Okay. This says one teaspoon baking soda. Then two baking powder. Okay. Yep. You need twice as much baking powder than okay. you do baking soda when you're making this batter. Okay, good to know. There you go. So we got a little salt going in there too. How much? One teaspoon. I hate it when they don't tell me how much, you know? I want to know. Yeah. It's always like you chefs, so it's like a sprinkle of this, a dash <laughs> of that. Like, well, what about us mortals? We don't know what to do. <laughs> Okay, now, do I stir oh, it? There you go. Okay, now I'm just kind of mixing it yep. about. Incorporating it in before mm -hmm. we mix everything at one time. Okay. Flour is so messy. This is where you put the apron on in the restaurant. Yes. You put it on at home. I really should. But I wanted to wear the sweater because we're going to make magic. <laughs> Abracadabra. A little bit in. Mm -hmm. And start stirring. Yep. Now, is this one of those things where you don't want to like, oh shoot, over mix? This is that thing. Okay. That you don't want to over mix. How's my whisking technique? Like you whisk with your shoulders. Okay. You want to whisk with your wrist. Like your what, like that? Yep, so more like, like this. show me. You see, mm -hmm. less, uh, so when you're doing it, your whole arm is into it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you just want to. I'm whisking. Yep. Okay. There you go. It already looks you like You see your nice air bubbles starting yes. to form. And air bubbles are okay, right? That's air what... bubbles are what's going to make it rise. Oh. You know, it's going to be those little pockets of air that's going to form. So you're perfect right there. You don't need to mix. Look at you. Clean whisk. Clean I whisk. I was never worried. <laughs> so right. now we're going to move over to this contraption here. Okay, this, this is This is our flat top griddle, which is also my favorite cooking utensil in the kitchen. So we have it turned on 300 degrees. Okay. Look all how right. much fat is on there. That's okay. all you need. Okay, wow. So we're going to get one ladle right there. Mm -hmm. Does this look? That looks great. Okay. Go right in the middle of that. Woo! There you go. Okay. Do you want me to do yours? Another, yep, do one for me. Mm -hmm. Now, big question would be, when do you put the toppings in? Like, when it's almost cooked, do I do it now? Always put the toppings in before you're gonna flip it. Okay. Because what happens is, if you put them in now, imagine we put these big old chips inside yes. of it now. It's gonna weight down the batter yeah. from rising. We want it to rise, right? Yeah. When do you flip the pancake? So you'll see the bubble starting to form. Mm -hmm. You'll see the outside of it starting to not break over. Now, I shouldn't be like messing with it, right? No, you shouldn't. You like to touch your food I when do. you're cooking I it. I want to see what's <laughs> happening. I got antsy. The goal is when you flip it, you don't want to flip it and the batter runs everywhere. Why is it, it already smelling so good? Because I did the recipe. 
<laughs> so, so darn old magic. About two minutes, two and a half minutes okay. on each side. Okay. We're okay. ready to flip now, some we'll pancakes. Now we'll wait. All right, let's watch the flip. We already okay. have. Okay. See, I'm going under first. Mm -hmm. Make sure I got enough underneath oh, God, it. God, the pressure. And then just Go a on. good flip. Mine's bigger. This is, <laughs> this is like okay. Come on. Confidence. Come on. See confidence. Do it, One, do two, it. ready, go. Yes! Perfect. Look at that. Yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah, and I see you want to smash it down. I do. I no, wanted to no, do no, so no, bad. I, I wanted to. You wanted to smash it down I so did. bad. I could what? tell. No, because you want it to rise. Okay. You know, allow the baking powder, baking soda, and the vinegar to do what they were created to do. Wow, you really get me. So let's toast to okay. your pancake flipping, mm -hmm. your omelet half flipping. Half flipping. You I'm know, working on that. But you're doing a great job. What about egg cracking? Oh, the egg was 100%. One hand. One handed egg, egg cracking. cracking. So we're ready to go have the plate here, and then okay. our next go around, we're going to just get creative. Ooh. Yum. Yeah. Let's drop some more pancakes. Now, do I need there. to respray? Well, I'm going to wipe it down first because you okay. can see the oil now yeah. has started to burn. Yeah. I'm going to spray that. Yep. I'm going to do yours too. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's see if I've learned this at all. How's that look to you? Enough? That's great. Okay. Now, wait 10 years while it cooks on each side. <laughs> it does take some time. I will it give does. you that. It does. Now, because the previous Savannah that had not been personally trained by Darnell would have probably flipped it right then. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, bubbles. But now I know kind of wait. Even bubbles. Patience, grasshopper. So what kind of toppings are you going to, what kind of filling are you going to put in these? I'm going I, funfetti for sure. Yeah, I think if my kids were here, they would definitely not pick the blueberries because it <laughs> seems healthy and close to the earth. Yeah. They go more for this. Yeah, so you're going to so do chocolate and peanut butter? I think butter? I'm going to do chocolate and funfetti. Is that crazy? Or chocolate and peanut butter? Now that sounds like a chocolate Snickers peanut butter sounds made in good. Yeah, that yeah. does. Okay, I'm, you're right. Chocolate okay. peanut butter. So go ahead. Now it's time. Oh, Look yeah, it's time. Pancake. Okay, so now I'm going to see how you just spread throughout or only in the middle? Oh, all so, throughout. My kids would die over that. That's so fun. Now look, I want to flip it. Now but you're now, ready. Am I? Because then this is going to be right against the hot stove. That's okay. Oh, that's what we want. Oh, okay. Same time, okay. Oh, God. One. Oh boy. Oh boy. Go. Stressed out. One, two, ready, go. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's a oh, perfect look at, look at, um, No, <laughs> you almost swished it down. I'm never using the yes. box batter again. Yes. That we're was ready. done, right? Yep. Okay. So I like to put them upside down so you can actually see which pancakes are which. Yes. Look at that. Ding, ding. That looks so good. Okay, bacon's almost done. Should we do a couple more, I guess? Yes, let's drop yep. a couple more while we get the bacon out the oven. Can you save this batter, by the way? You can use that batter for the next five days. No! So make it one time, cook a little bit that day, the next morning you wake up. That's how people cook pancakes every morning. Oh my gosh. Oh. It is that time to get this bacon. Okay. There you go, so you don't burn yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've heard about me. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Shut up. Yeah. Graceful as always. Okay. There you go. Man, that looks good. Look at that bacon. Oh my gosh. Yum. This is perfect. It oh. seriously looks so pro. Now I'm just trying I'm to. Extremely hungry. I know. Me too. Me so too. So one thing you want to do is yeah. while the bacon's still hot, yes. you want to move it off the tray. Okay. Because so. if you let the bacon sit. Then it has that chance that it's hardening from, oh. the, from the candy. Hardening, okay, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so move that, yeah. Perfect mm -hmm. gloss on top of the bacon. I mean, it looks See perfect. a little specks of brown sugar. I imagine it's the one you make because it has less brown sugar yeah. on it. I'll take the <laughs> It's true, but that's good to pieces. know. I'm starving now. Okay. All right, shall we? Want to grab the pancakes? Yes, let's go eat.
Breakfast with the Breakfast King. Let's go. Oh, and now the Breakfast Queen. <laughs> exactly. Well, trying. Maybe Princess. Princess. A, the Breakfast Apprentice. <laughs> okay. My omelet doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a little no. wonky, but I'm sure it'll taste just fine. Mm. Pretty good if I do say so myself. How's yours? Whoever made this knew what they were doing. I gotta eat the pancakes. I mean, come on. That's good. That is so delicious. It's oh nice and light. It's light, it's fluffy. Goodbye boxed mix. Yes. Hello Darnell. A couple more oh ingredients to buy at the grocery store, but it's worth it. It's worth it and it doesn't take that much longer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Now you have that to try is, the bacon, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, the bacon. You forgot all about the bacon. I know, I did, actually. That is delicious. I'm glad you like it. We love to have people over. I love to cook a big old breakfast. This is a good time to kind of show off and make it seem like you got skills. Yep, and all it takes is a little sprinkle, some chocolate mm. uh, chips, and some peanut butter chips. Oh, yeah. It takes it out to a whole nother level. And the candied bacon. That will be the star of your house if you have a party or brunch and you have that. I mean, people will never leave. Well, now you have to put in to-go boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way they know it's not for here forever. Thank you so much for teaching me. No, thanks for allowing me to be easy, understanding, and not touching the food so much. <laughs> well, I feel like you gave me some really good secrets, like some special just Darnell stuff, and I'm so honored. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Things I've just been working on for about 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Right? Gave them to you in 10 to 12 minutes. I know. <laughs> it's like all this heart. I'm really excited to oh, try it. You did a great job. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. That's right. <laughs>
I was diagnosed with ME-CFS, myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, at 18, 19 years old. And as the years have progressed, I have basically become homebound and disabled. 75% of people uh, cannot work full-time with my disease, and 25% are actually bedbound. And I had an incredible opportunity to write what we experience on a page for people who might have no experience with chronic illness. Since it came out, the book has won praise from everyone, including one very important fan. My mom cries every time I call her. She's so happy, and there is nothing like hearing your mom, like, fell, you know what I mean? So even though I have to talk about how she ripped down my green construction paper <laughs> for Christmas tree, she's very proud. As for her own love story, Jean found it with her husband, Jeb. And with the matzo ball's success, she already has more books in the works to keep the menorah fire burning. I never thought this book was gonna get published. The way it's been accepted has just been beyond my wildest dreams. It's a Hanukkah miracle. <laughs> Holiday decorations started popping up even before Thanksgiving, and we found a local dive bar in Washington, D.C. that is taking Hanukkah to a whole new level. Check it out. Quick show of hands, who's been here more than five times? More than 10 times? Six years ago, Josh Saltzman, along with his buddies Chris Powers and Adam Fry, opened Ivy and Coney, a sports bar located in the heart of Washington, D.C. What started as a bar for their friends quickly turned into a local hotspot. We pride ourselves on being a neighborhood bar, on people coming here every week. And in December, they give people another reason to visit. Ivy and Coney, the sports bar, transforms into Ivy and Coney, the Hanukkah bar. How did this come to be? Why did you want to bring Hanukkah to a bar? Every bar and restaurant decks out for Christmas, but there's nowhere for us to have a lot of fun with Hanukkah. Did you and your partners all grow up celebrating Hanukkah? I'm actually the only Jewish owner of the, of the bar. We didn't have the string lights and the decorations outside um, that our neighbors had, and you know, I was always a little jealous of that. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Dressing up the bar for everyone's enjoyment is a job Josh and his team take very seriously. This could not be an easy task. This is fully decked out. It, I mean, it, it, is a, it is a total team effort, including all of our regulars who have been slaving away, making all these uh, snowflakes for the bar. The highlight is what they call the Shot Nora. This was uh, an idea spawned from uh, one too many drinks. We're gonna do a Shot Menorah so that eight people can take a, a shot of schnapps or Manischewitz at the same time. Are you concerned at all that some people might think not everything is quite kosher? We hope that when, when people see, um, see the bar and see what we're doing, that they understand that this is just us having fun. This is not meant to be disrespectful or anything. Well, I am ready to have some fun tonight. Yeah, and as am I. What is on my checklist? You have to eat some latkes. You have to take a turn, spin in the dreidel, shoot on the, the shot Nora, and have a good time. Up for the challenge, I stirred up their popular Sufgani Yote-inspired cocktail with co-owner Adam Fry. Vanilla vodka, citrus vodka, blackberry manischewitz. Give it a dash of powdered sugar. Pour into the top, jelly donut in a glass. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Delicious. Then, in the kitchen with Chris Powers, who showed me how to make the perfect latke, courtesy of Josh's grandmother's secret recipe. It's a perfect sponge for everything that you're drinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> See my masterwork? I mean, look at this. All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I think you did good. Oh, yeah. Later, as Hyvie and Coney started to fill up, it was time for games of dreidel. And you get it all. And I got it all! Rounds of Jello Shevitz, Jello shots of Manischewitz wine, Ohio. and of course the shot Nora. One, two, two three. Look high. Ohio. Ohio. Is there something special about having a bar devoted to this? It feels very homey. It's all like very crafty, and it reminds me of like how my mom would decorate back in home. Really? Yeah. Which is exactly the sentiment Josh and his team set out to capture each holiday season. Seeing everyone come together, whether they're Jewish or not, and spinning the dreidel, eating a couple latkes, it's been a lot of fun.
Welcome back to The Boost. Our third hour co-hosts love them some good team bonding. And for a recent adventure, they headed out of Studio 1A to a boozy candle making class. Let's just say it sparked a lot of laughs. Most people use candles to wind down. But for us, it was a good excuse to get out of Studio 1A and get lit. Are you guys ready to re-wax and unwind? Actually, Craig waxed just before we got here. <laughs> I love it. Don't encourage that. My name is Ashley. I am the founder and franchisor of Rewax and Unwind. I understand the wax part, the candle. What's the unwind part? Oh, we're going to be drinking. Oh! Oh, wow. Our first stop, the fragrance station, to test our senses. So, Craig, what do you think this one is? It smelled uh, akin to vanilla, but it's not. I actually took this from the Spirits and Cocktails. Ooh. And Burn. Yes. Oh, yeah. Great job, Al. <laughs> so this one is under the clean category, OK? OK. What is? I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue now, too. Dryer yeah. sheet. Yeah, it's like I'm thinking like baby wipes. Baby powder. Oh. oh. Yes. oh. Very good. Yeah. Ashley directing us to sniff away and write down our favorite aromas. Oh, I hate hazelnut. Ooh, this is nice. Smell this, moonflower. I like that. You know what? I'm surprised that I picked Axe body spray. <laughs> oh my god, so are so bad. Almost bubble gummy to me. Honeysuckle, moonflower. Yeah. It smells like um, deodorant. As Ashley got our next station ready, we uncorked and unwind. Toast. To the nonsense people. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, what, what, look at you. What did you say? To the nonsense people. Yeah, sense. Like sense? Yes. Very smart. Cheers. Wow, that was very nice. After we settled on our four fragrances, it was time to combine them at the candle making station, creating oh, oh. our signature scents. I've got the Sequoia English Oak, bourbon, I've got moonflower, and old library books. Oh, you like smoky, dusty. I do, kind of like me. Uh, oh. <laughs> OK, fine. I've got Fraser fur, okay, very Christmassy. I've got jasmine, clean linen, and Axe body spray. Would you pick Dylan? Clean linen, sea breeze, vanilla, and cucumber. I think I had citrus, oh, citron, Fraser fur, old library, grapefruit. So we're gonna determine how we're gonna find our signature scent. The lids are already open for you. All you're gonna do is say, does zucchini blossom go well with sandalwood rose, as an example? And you're gonna move oh. your head back and forth. Oh. And puff, yes. there you go. Oh. So the beakers, this is where the magic happens. You're literally going to go drop by drop until you get to 20 milliliters, okay? So you're gonna say a little bit of zucchini blossom, a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, okay. And you're gonna use your stirring utensil here. Stir and let your nose lead you to what you wanna add next. I was trying to be polite, but Dylan smells like Robitussin. <laughs> so, maybe it needs more vanilla. <laughs> That's not that bad. <laughs> that smells like you have the flu. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I love it. You like that? Very masculine, but sweet. Kind of like, like yourself. Yeah. Ah, well, that's good. Sweet. I like I it a lot. I differ on that one. Okay, here we go. Now that's just, just kind that's of a nice fresh. clean citron green. Wait, I want to add it to our kids. Next, we poured hot wax into our mixtures along with colored dyes and some special adornments. Once our candle creations dried, it was the moment of truth. So here are your candles, guys. What do you think? Listen, I <laughs> buy owls. Yes. I love mine. Like, I, I, this is really, really awesome. It's rare that I say this, but I choose Craig's. Oh, I give you my Oh, I love the glitter on top. All in all, I think you'd agree. It was a sensational day to buddy up. Well, Cheers. Here's to these fantastic scents. Each one different and each one special. Aww. Just like all of you. Oh, wow, that was so sweet. I can't wait to give this to someone as a Christmas gift. <laughs> oh, very nice. Jen and I shared our own little adventure getting out of Studio 1A and out of our comfort zones. We said yes to a very frigid polar plunge. So grab a warm blanket and take a look. Every winter at the turn of the new year, the boldest among us brave the cold and just their swimsuits for a dip into near freezing water. That's right, it's the polar bear plunge. What seems like a wild stunt for daredevils is so much more. This 100 year long tradition has raised millions of dollars for charity and helps countless risk takers feel refreshed for a new year. 
Famous past polar bears include Lady Gaga, Jimmy Fallon, and even our Today Show pals, Alan Craig. This is the perfect time to face like a brand new challenge and see if you can do it. It's like, what do we want to do in 2022? You know, let's do something cool. And by cool, I mean frigid. The beach is my second home. So if you're going to do a challenge and you're doing one on the beach, you got my number. OK, I've never done a polar plunge, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. But I'm imagining Baywatch. You know, slow, beautiful running into warm temperature. It all seemed great when we were driving up here. Yeah. It all seemed great when we got out of the car. And then all of a sudden and we all the felt sudden, the this, wind. This is the illusion of a summer day. Yes. But we know right now it's it cold. is biting cold. We're a little nervous. Yes. By the way, I just went to the bathroom before this and the toilet seat was cold. <laughs> so, so that tells you I'm everything. Terrified right <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so freezing. You might have noticed we're not the only ones looking to check an item off our bucket list. We're joined by the official Long Beach polar bears. These New Yorkers have been jumping into the ocean every winter for 24 years, raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They heard we were coming and they couldn't resist an excuse to plunge. Any advice for us newbies? It's timing, yeah. timing. It's time. Wait. But you're going to help us with the timing, you're right? Yes, we're, gonna help you. we're all going to be together. Oh, they told us we had to wear those, no? No, that's a yeah. negative. We do need yeah. 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 oh, no, no shoes! Yeah. No booties! <laughs> Never go in the ocean or any body of water without a lifeguard. Oh, that's true. You know. A good looking one. Yes. That's a good looking one. So you'll save us. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We couldn't stall any longer. It was time to plunge. Oh, no. Why are you doing <laughs> My hands are numb. That was crazy. My hair is wet. We went under. We did. We have to check our vitals yeah, to make sure we're okay. Still alive.
We're back here on The Boost and we're introducing you to a painter who's really making waves in the art world. Just 11 years old and he's already turning heads at Art Miami with some of his work going for six figures. NBC's Kathy Park has more. A breakout star at one of the premier art fairs in the country sold nearly all of his work on the first night. The average cost is about $150,000. Not bad for an 11 year old whose paintings are being compared to Picasso's. What's the best way to describe your artwork? A hint of cubism, surrealism a little, and some um, Modigliani. We met Andres Valencia at Art Miami, where fans couldn't get enough of the painting prodigy. Even rock stars like John Bon Jovi stop by to admire his work. Other celebrities are taking notice too, adding an Andres original to their collection. I never think of anything I'm going to do. I just go on and start drawing. Have you taken any art lessons before? I've never taken any art lessons. Never. Some gallery owners say his talents are comparable to much more seasoned artists. Yeah, I've seen Andres almost do what I see some artists take 10 or 20 years to do in like one year. And his mom, Elsa, can attest to the constant flow of ideas that end up on canvas. It comes naturally and I don't interfere with it. We're in the car, wherever we're at, he's just like sketching. We saw that creative process in person as he put together another masterpiece in minutes. Man, you're really moving. His following is growing among high-profile collectors, but Andres is also using his talents to give back. What's the name of this painting? This one is the Ukrainian painting. Shortly after the invasion in Ukraine, Andres wanted to do more. So I made this painting to make sure people don't forget what happened to Ukraine. Profits from the prints of this painting will help Ukrainian children through the Klitschko Foundation. One of the founders, Vladimir Klitschko, shared a message of gratitude. Your artwork is amazing. It is helping us already and it's going to help lots of kids as well around the world. A gifted fifth grader. This is Happy Clowns. Who says he's just getting started. When you're an adult, do you want to keep painting? I want to do this for the rest of my life. For today, Kathy Park, NBC News, Miami. Now to our Dad's Got This series, Craig met a very talented father-daughter duo who created a little corner of YouTube that's become a huge hit. And there's a special reason they're doing it. They're the children's songs taking the internet by storm. Revolutionizing how we think about nursery rhymes. Let's have my two. All thanks to this father-daughter duo who are putting representation front and center on YouTube Grace. with Gracie's Corner. How did all of this get started? For me, it started really out of a result of the pandemic. I saw um, a lot of the content that my kids were watching. One of the things that stood out to me was like, man, there's very few to almost no, no children that look like my daughter that are portrayed on the, on the screen. Two years ago, music was the furthest thing from Javoris Hollingsworth's mind, teaching chemistry at the University of St. Thomas in Houston. I'm a musician turned scientist, now turned back musician. I grew up in the church um, and learned to play the drum and the keyboard. Javoris has since hung off his lab coat to work on the YouTube channel full time with his daughter, Gracie. It was a tough decision because I recognize the impact that I can have in the classroom, but then I also recognize the impact that this channel is having on a global scale. What sound does the letter make? His goal is to empower kids to embrace who they are while learning basic skills. Javoris leans on his wife Arlene's psychology background to make sure the messages are clear. And Gracie is the face and voice of the channel through her cartoon character. From their DIY home studio and with the help of a graphic artist, the two have put a modern spin to those nursery rhymes we all know so well. And are composing original songs as well. One of the things I love about the videos is, is you, you use one of my favorite genres, hip hop, 
to connect yeah. with, with kids? There's a lot of kids songs out there, but many of them you almost want to pull your hair out. I'm right, just right. Being, <laughs> You're right. My mindset was like, okay, how can we make this fun? Make it something that a parent wouldn't mind riding in a car and listening to. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate. They even tackle hard subjects like race with songs celebrating Juneteenth and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The response has been undeniable. Gracie's Corner has racked up more than 200 million views on YouTube. The cool thing to see too is that uh, not only have the kids been able to enjoy it, but also parents. For Gracie, who's now 10, the quality time with her dad is the reward. Does he ever have an idea for a song or, or video and you say, Dad, no, that, that's not, that's not Gracie. Well, mostly all the time he's at, um, <laughs> kind of like I'm the boss of him. She graced us with a small performance of her favorite song. Come on, baby, brush your teeth and let's brush our teeth. Come on, Gracie. A lot of people are brushing their teeth because of you. Hopefully they're not doing it too much. <laughs> For this former professor, continuing to educate and empower kids is the ultimate teaching moment. Now to a photographer getting to pursue his passion thanks to the students who engineered a way to help him. No matter how many words a picture says, it may not reveal much from the other side of the camera. But these images from this photographer tell quite a story. What do you love about photography? I love that it takes it takes you on a journey, and you don't have to go very far. Still, Aurelian Barber's journey has not been simple. He says arthrogryposis limits his limbs, muscles, and joints, confining him to a wheelchair, making it difficult to hold a camera. I'm not able to open my hand and grasp a bed. Using a timer, even biting down to record videos, the 45-year-old still found a way to overcome his struggle. Even being able to look at a photo and know you took it is special. Yes. But the Cleveland man wanted to do more when word reached some engineering students at nearby Case Western Reserve University. With help from Barber and an advisor, in these spaces, students designed and built a motorized arm for a swiveling gimbal, taking Barber's photography to new heights. I didn't want to like not finish it or like give up on it because I wanted Aurelian to have something that he could take photographs with. Be able to hear that somebody we really were able to change someone's life, that's hugely gratifying for us. One passion supporting another, helping these pictures say a whole lot more. Even somebody with physical disability can have dreams and ideas, artistic ideas and limitations should not slow them down. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News, Cleveland. boost this next one something really fun check it out guys when it is time to play music for a baby you might choose a sweet lullaby maybe something classical that is unless your baby is a seven-month-old girl named Oakley for her 
It's good old time rock and roll or nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you, oh, Amy Oakley likes some ACDC. Her mom <laughs> says they introduced her to music when she was one week old, that oh. music. They used to play Stuck on You by Lionel Richie to soothe her, but as the months went on, she decided no. She wants to broaden out, so she likes pop hits. She loves 70s classic rock. Thank you so much for joining us right here on The Boost. We hope we see you right back here tomorrow for more fun and festive stories right here on Today All Day. Hi there, I'm Today Lifestyle and Commerce contributor Jill Martin. The holidays are here and it's my favorite time of year, gifting season. And no need to stress, I've got you covered. I'm Today contributor Alejandra Ramos. Food and festivities go hand in hand. And I'm here with fabulous gifts for both the cooks and sous chefs in your life. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post. Tis the season of giving, and I'm here with the most fashionable finds at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop Today, Gifts We Love. Hi, I'm Today Lifestyle and Commerce contributor Jill Martin, and we have a special show for you today with all of our favorite finds just in time for the holiday season. I've rounded up the best gifts that you can personalize and customize for anyone on your list. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text GIFTS to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started with these gorgeous initial necklaces from Jennifer Miller Jewelry. Now these are CZ initial necklaces, but what a bold statement they make. The brand says these necklaces are best sellers, it's gold plated, and the initial is laid with cubic zirconia gem. And what's great about these necklaces is they come on a paper clip chain, which means you could wear them all year long at different lengths. Gift this dainty necklace to your mom, your sister, or your best friend, and while you're at it, gift one to yourself to match your loved ones. And I love layering, as you know, really a beautiful gift. All right, let's move on to that gift that's not just personalized, but can also be customized. Daily edited customized phone cases. I actually use these. These phone cases from the Daily Edited are super chic, and you can make it your own. Choose everything from the color and style of the case, as well as the font, the color, and the size of the name or monogram you wanna put on it. So many options to create your own design and these cases are available for both iPhone and Android phones. This makes a great gift for someone who just got a new phone and needs a stylist accessory to show it off. And it also makes the person feel like you really put the thought into it. Here's another gift you can share with loved ones to remember all your special memories. Minted Heart Snapshot Mixed Photo Art. I love this. This photo art takes 30 of your favorite photos and memories and turns it into a unique collage in the shape of a heart. How beautiful is that? It's so simple. You just upload all your photos to the website and they do the rest for you. You can customize the type and color of the frame and it comes in a variety of sizes from an eight by eight inch frame all the way up to 44 by 44 so you can really make a statement. It's the perfect gift for a significant other or any family member or friend, especially if they live far away. Fill up a frame with photos of your kids and gift it to their grandparents. It can be both a beautiful piece of art to hang on your wall and a family keepsake. We've also got the perfect piece of art for those pet owners on your list who are obsessed, we all know them, with their furry friends, a custom pet portrait. Impersonate me, custom pet portraits. Choose your favorite photo of your pet and upload it to the company site. You can personalize it even more by adding their name, choosing the background and color, and the frame, or you can make it a canvas. The portraits are printed on gallery quality paper, and the frames come with ready to hang attachments. The company says their artists spend about two hours creating an illustration of your pet to make sure they capture every detail, and they're hand drawn. What's great is they can fit up to four pets in one portrait which is great for those family and friends who may have adopted a dog or cat or two or three over the last year. And look, the real Rocky, and look at the Rocky in the frame. Isn't that amazing? All right, 
Moving on to some personalized gift ideas for the kitchen and beyond. The Mark & Graham Monogram Stemless Wine Glasses. These Mark & Graham Stemless Wine Glasses are the perfect host or hostess gift to bring to your next holiday party this season. Imagine with a glass of wine, beautiful. These transparent glasses come in a set of four and a few color options. Clear, blush, pink, or a multicolor pastel variety. I love that. The brand is known for their signature monogrammable products, so of course you could monogram these glasses too. Choose from a whole host of fonts, designs, and colors for the text, so you can really make it personal. I think this is just such a beautiful gift. The brand says they're made from shatterproof plastic and they're dishwasher safe. So they feel substantial, but they won't break. Perfect for dinner parties and get togethers this holiday season and all year long, one of my favorites. From hard beverages to hot beverages, here's another gift idea for personalized drinkware. The Rifle Paper Company for Anthropology Garden Party Monogram Mug. These monogram mugs from Rifle Paper Company for Anthropology are beautifully crafted with floral design and a gilded monogram letter of your choice. This line of mugs was made exclusively for Anthropology to celebrate Rifle Paper Company's 10th anniversary, so you really can't find these anywhere else. If you want to gift something that feels personalized at a great price point, this mug will do the trick for almost anyone on your list, and they'll think of you every time they drink coffee or tea. The next customizable gift is perfect for anyone who spends way too much time in the kitchen. Personalized mall kitchen mats. From classic to modern designs, you can customize these mats with your family name, monogram, or a favorite quote. That's cute, right? These mats are not only cute, but they're comfy too, which is so important. A perfect gift for the dedicated dishwasher or chef of the family, I'm the dishwasher. They also work great in front of the kitchen doorway or in the front door that leads to the patio or backyard. So they're so versatile because they'll catch all the dirt that your family members drag in after having all that fun. And lastly, we have something for all the handy people on your list. We couldn't forget about them. The Victorinox Swiss Army Knife Go Classic. This year, when it comes to gifting for your special guy or girl or dad or brother with the Huntsman Swiss Army Knife from Victorinox. And of course, you can personalize it. And our crew was just saying how great it is as a family heirloom to pass down from generation to generation if you want to put your family name on it. Choose from eight different colors and patterns and print the name or initials on the front or back. It comes with 15 functions and includes scissors, a corkscrew, and a wood saw. It's also small enough to put in your pocket, as you know, and tow it around for outdoor activities whenever you might need a tool at the ready. Okay, let's run through all the products one more time so you can get shopping. The Jennifer Miller initial necklaces, the daily edited phone cases, the minted photo art frame, the custom pet portraits, the stemless wine glasses, the monogram mug, the personalized kitchen mats, and the Victoria Knox Swiss Army Knife. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Well, that's it for personalized gifts. Up next, Alejandra Ramos is sharing kitchen gadgets and appliances big and small that are oh so giftable from a fan favorite pan that dazzles amateur and professional chefs alike to a set of oil and vinegar containers that are chic enough to display on your countertop. All that plus more, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. I'm Today contributor Alejandra Ramos, and I'm excited to share great kitchen gadgets that you can gift your foodie friends, at-home chefs, or even those that don't know their way around the kitchen. I've got you covered with essentials like a cult favorite pan that can cook just about anything to unique finds that'll make great host gifts this holiday season. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text GIFTS to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you. So let's jump right in with this eye-catching elevated kitchen essential, sheet pans. This set comes with two super adorable quarter sheet pan sizes. This is the perfect size, whether you just got a little cookie craving or you're making dinner. You can cook the veggies on one, the fish or the chicken on the other. They come coated in this beautiful non-stick ceramic that comes in these gorgeous colors. You've got this blueberry cobalt blue, or just hunter green, and my favorite is that raspberry pink up in front. Let's move on to another item that can go straight from the oven to your table, and this one's great for families. The Nordic Ware Pizza Stone Set. So I've got a pizza stone at home, and this is perfect for making those restaurant-quality style pizzas with that perfect amount of chew, the perfect char, amazing flavor in your own home oven. What's fantastic about cooking with stoneware is that it retains heat evenly and it also absorbs moisture. So that's how you get that perfect crust every time. Now, if you don't like to make pizza from scratch, you can actually do what I confess I did today and get one of those frozen pizzas. You can still bake it in your oven on the pizza stone, but you're gonna get that amazing texture. It's really gonna upgrade that pizza night. This is a really fantastic one. And I love that those handles really make it easy to carry so you don't have to worry about bringing that from the oven to your table. So you've probably seen these next few kitchen items all over social media. They've become cult favorites to at-home chefs of all levels. This is the Our Place Always Pan Set. So this pan has sold out multiple times and with good reason. The brand calls this a do-it-all wonder that was designed by cooks to replace eight pieces of traditional cookware. So this is a fry pan, a saute pan, a steamer, a skillet, a saucier, a saucepan. Yes, those are two different things. A nonstick pan, and it has a built-in spatula and spoon rest. Whew, amazing, right? So it's really perfect for anyone that has say a small kitchen, not a lot of storage space, or someone that's just getting started in the kitchen and doesn't have all those pots and pans that they need, this is gonna get them set up with just one gift. It comes in a bunch of beautiful colors, looks beautiful on your stove top, and of course, also on the dinner table. So we've got all that wonderful functionality in the pan, but Our Place also made the perfect pot. So the Our Place Perfect Pot replaces those larger things in your kitchen. Think that Dutch oven, the roasting pan, that big giant pot you always pull out every time you're gonna make pasta. This sort of takes a place with all of that in one. It's got that same multi-use functionality as the pan, but it's better for making those big pots of soups, the chili, I mean, this is like that chili season, right? So this is absolutely perfect for that. And what's really cool is that it was designed with a lid that has a built-in colander already. So you can just pull it right out in that same pot, no need for anything else. And this comes with a built-in custom roasting rack that you can use for roasting, say a small roast chicken or some vegetables, get those really delicious crispy potatoes. They really did think of everything 
So we've got space-saving products, but we've also got time-saving products that you can gift. I love this Instant Vortex Mini Two-Quart Air Fryer. Now, air fryers have probably been one of the hottest appliances in the kitchen world for the past couple years, and that's with good reason. They are essentially countertop convection ovens that use hot air that circulates all around your food to give you those crispy, crunchy, amazing textured foods that we all love. Think French fries, buffalo wings, all the good stuff. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Such a great time saver. And what's fantastic about this two quart size is that it's perfect for those who don't have a lot of counter space. Maybe you don't have a lot of storage space. It's a good amount for maybe one or two people. So think singles, college kids, anyone setting up that first kitchen or anyone that really wants to try out the functionality of an air fryer, but doesn't really have the space for the big guy. Now, if you do have a little bit more counter space, they do also make a bigger version. So this is the Instant Vortex 5.7 quart air fryer. It's fantastic if you're into entertaining. Now, you heard me say instant, and that's right, that is the same instant that makes the instant pot. So you know this is a brand that knows their way around a kitchen. So if you've got less space, Check out that mini one. If they've got a bigger kitchen, grab the big one. Either way, they're gonna have fantastic meals and they're gonna love you for it. Now, this next product isn't just a time saver, it's also a really beautiful appliance. This is the Bodum Electric Kettle. I love the gooseneck shape of this. It's got these wonderful cork handles that stay cool. And what's really great about this is it just saves you time. So whether you are a coffee drinker, a tea drinker, maybe you just love a cozy bowl of ramen or instant oatmeal, you can use your kettle to boil that water in seconds. And it's got that one touch button. So you fill it with water, you hit the button. Once it's ready, it shuts off. I love that auto shut off, especially during those busy mornings. I don't need a kettle screaming at me, right? Love that beautiful stainless steel or you've got the matte black. No matter what their kitchen looks like, this is gonna look absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of giftable items that'll help add those finishing touches to your meal. I love this set of oil and vinegar stoneware containers from West Elm. You get this beautiful bone white version, the charcoal gray. It's a nice kind of matte stoneware. It's really elegant, really chic. This is something that's wonderful for someone that's an entertainer. They're just gonna look so elegant on their dinner table or on their countertop. Whether they're cooking, they can use it right in the pan and then they can bring it to the table once you're enjoying dinner. And last but not least, something that'll bring your gift tea that farm to table feel without the farm. Modern Sprout Grow Kits. These are absolutely wonderful whether you've got curious kids or anyone that wants to try their hand at gardening but doesn't really have those skills. You do not need a green thumb for this. You can choose from the mint or the basil to add a little something special to your dishes or for that spa feel in your kitchen, they've got lavender and eucalyptus the perfect gift for cooks, aspiring gardeners, or just about anyone who wants to grow plants in their kitchen without any fuss. All right, so let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the sheet pan set, the Nordic Ware pizza stone set, the Our Place Always Pan set and perfect pot, the Instant Mini Air Fryer and 5.7 Quart Air Fryer, the Electric Kettle, the beautiful oil and vinegar stoneware containers, and the modern sprout grow kit. That's a wrap on Gifts from the Kitchen. Up next, Chassis Post has the best fashion finds for everyone on your list in Style Finder. From the softest pajamas for both women and men to the most adorable mommy and me dresses. Stay tuned for more gifts we love.
Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back with more gifts we love in Style Finder. From the softest pajamas for both gals and guys to matching holiday dresses for moms and their minis, we got gifts for just about anyone on your list. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text gifts to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Pajamas are an easy go-to gift for your friends and family, and these are both stylish and cozy. So first up, we have a gorgeous set. It's a take on the classic menswear pajama, which I think is so chic. And the top has everything we look for in that sort of classic menswear style. It's got the contrast piping. It's got the great button-down top. And it is nice and roomy, so it's easy to sleep in. Also, I love that it has a little bit of feminine flair. It's got a little swing silhouette. So it makes it really flattering. And let's say your giftee has a few pair of pajamas. You can actually try this fabulous nightshirt. It's kind of like an elongated version of the pajama top. It's got a shirt tail hem. That just means it's a little shorter in front, a longer in the back for a little bit of coverage. And don't worry, we have pajamas for the men in your life too. These PJs from Tommy John are so unbelievably soft. And I love the idea of upgrading your favorite fella's sleepwear or loungewear. And they actually come with pockets that are functioning pockets. And this is really great because if you're wearing them around the house and you're lounging, it kind of doesn't feel like you're wearing your pajamas. But they're also really slim profile, so they're easy to sleep in. And if you want to add to this set a perfect complement is this fabulous lounge hoodie. It's made out of fabric that is just as soft. It's actually a heathered stretch jersey. Look at this silhouette. It's not too oversized, but it's roomy enough to be super duper comfy. And what we love about the lounge hoodie is you can wear it around the house, you can sleep in it, or it's good looking enough that you could wear every day. And if your guy or your dad or any other man in your life has enough pajamas, we've got one of the number one quintessential men's gifts ever, a fabulously festive plaid flannel shirt. This is from The Gap. It's a 100% organic cotton flannel shirt. It's mid-weight. It kind of feels like a warm hug. And you know, guys can be difficult to shop for, right? And I feel like a really good looking flannel shirt is always a winning gift because you know, it's plaid. It's such a big trend, so it feels festive. It feels gifty, but they can wear it all year long. And what guys love about this shirt is the cut. So it's an easy, straight cut. It's kind of loose, but not oversized. It's really comfortable to wear. It hits at the hip, so that means he can wear it untucked or out. And it makes a really great layering piece, so he can wear it over a T-shirt. If you size up, he can even wear it over a hoodie. And guess what, gals? Guys aren't the only ones who can wear this shirt. In fact, ladies can wear these too. I think this is a great, great gift. So let's move on to accessories. And we've got the most perfect and practical gift for any woman on your list. And I have to say that pretty much every woman I know is always on the hunt for that perfect tote. It really is one of the hardest working accessories in all of our fashion arsenal. This little tote is called the Mini Reversible Faux Leather Tote and Wristlet. First of all, it's reversible. So that means it's like two bags in one. And that's not all. You can actually change the shape of this bag. So see these grommets here? These actually connect the removable shoulder strap. But you can actually push the grommets in to create more of this little square shape, or you can pull them out to create more of a sloping silhouette. So I love that this bag is so incredibly versatile. Plus, it comes in five different color combinations. So here we have the black and wine combo. Here we have the leopard print and black combo. And you guys have heard me say this, but I promise it is true. Leopard is the new neutral. It will go with absolutely everything in your closet. And here we have the reverse version of the wine and black combo. So you guys can see it from the other side. So this really does make a great gift for the woman on your list who loves accessories or handbags.
This next gift idea is just the thing for the jewelry lover on your list. Here we have the Pisa gold bead stackable bracelets and the more the merrier. And there's so many beautiful styles here. We've got the initials, we have fun charms, little hearts here, both pave and also enamel. And what's so fun about these as well is you know, they're great for jewelry lovers of any age. And I love that this is a gift that you can keep on giving. So for example, for the holidays, you can give one or two. And then when their birthday rolls around, you can give another, another occasion. Maybe it's a graduation, then you give another. So you can help the recipient build their own beautiful stack of bracelets. And the price is really affordable. So if you really want to wow that fashionable gal on the go of any age this year, these are Rothy's. So we've got the point, which is their OG flat that sort of put them on the map. And we've also got sneaker styles. What people love so much about these shoes is that they're incredibly innovative. Now, the thread with this knit, which is super duper comfy, is actually made out of recycled plastic bottles. And the brand says that they have repurposed over 40 million plastic bottles since the brand was founded, which was 2016. And another thing that is just so exciting about these shoes is that they are machine washable. Yes, I mean, even the flats. How cool is that? And they come in so many adorable colors and patterns. They are fantastic for any age. They even make styles for kids. And lastly, let's talk about this showstopper. This has been a huge trend all year long. The nap dress, and this is the original that started it all, the Hill House nap dress. And the only thing that is better than one Hill House nap dress is a little mommy and me combo. This is truly the ultimate gift for any mommy and me duo, right? Hill House actually dropped a new collection of fall, winter, and year round styles that are just gorgeous. And not just for moms, as we said, but also for the little gals too. And so for all of you that are maybe new to the nap dress trend, let me tell you a little bit about it. So essentially, it's a dress that feels like you're wearing a nightgown, but it is so stylish that you can wear it absolutely anywhere. And here's some of the hallmarks. It's got a great, very easy to wear, very comfy A-line skirt here. It's midi length. It's got a wonderful stretchy smocking here at the top. And it's got the signature wonderful ruffle strap. And these fabrics in the new drop are just so sumptuous. Here we have this gorgeous, luxurious velvet, and I'm loving all the colors. This beautiful burgundy, a gorgeous emerald green, but they also have some timeless prints and the fact that you can be so incredibly comfortable, so incredibly stylish, and do it with your little mini puts this gift over the edge for me. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Nordstrom Moonlight Pajamas and Night Shirt, the Tommy John Second Skin Sleep Pants and Lounge Hoodie, the Gap Flannel Shirt, the Mini Reversible Faux Leather Tote and Wristlet, the Bobble Bar Pisa Bracelets, the Rothy's Flats and Sneakers, and the Hill House Home Mommy and Me Ellie Nap Dresses. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on Style Finder gifts and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorite gift ideas for the holiday season. Tune in next week for even more gifts we love. Thanks for watching. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. Darn. Again, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook, but I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, Darnell Super Chef Ferguson is going to teach me his tricks for the most important meal of the day. 
breakfast. We're making an American style omelet with all the fixings, the crispiest candy bacon, and a classic pancakes that everyone in my family will love. I'm feeling pretty confident about this one and I love breakfast, so let's get started. Darnell Ferguson, thank you for coming all this way. I really love breakfast. I even like breakfast for dinner. Do you ever do that? See, that's what I was going to say. You know, we can do, we're going to do breakfast, brunch, and some brinner. Okay, you know? exactly. Yeah. I love brinner. Our plan for today is one, Savannah will learn how to cook a flawless sunny side up egg. Two, we'll cook an American style omelet. Three, sprinkle brown sugar and grind pepper for candied bacon. Four, make the pancake batter. Five, use the griddle to make the pancakes. Six, plate and serve. This is probably gonna make you laugh. I don't really know how to fry an egg. I mean, okay. I've tried it before. I don't I don't know, it just, I don't know how to flip it over. Could we just learn that basic thing first? Yeah, so since you don't know how to flip it over, let's start with sunny side up. Okay. Which is my favorite style of eggs. All right. right? The least cooked egg yes. is a sunny side up egg. Then you have over easy, you have over medium, and every egg keeps getting cooked more. We have our eggs right here. Mm -hmm. okay. Little one-on-one for cracking eggs is yes. never crack it on the corner. Okay. Do you crack it on the corner at home? Um, yeah. From here on out, you're not going to, okay? Yeah. So we're going to crack it on a flat surface. Well, right but then see, that wasn't Perfect. very good. Perfect. See, that was easy. Should I try it again? Yeah, try another one. Just let go. me try. Okay. I, this is the only way to learn, You I were think. strong, so yeah, there you go. Okay, that Perfect. was better. See? Round two is there now. Practice makes yep. perfect. Okay, so now. So we're going to lightly just let that egg just fall right into the pan. I see you just did yolk last. Was that on purpose? Oh, no, I don't have a choice. The egg is in control this year. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's going to do what it wants to do. I'm just here as a bystander. Okay, the egg is driving. <laughs> I'd be worried. I'm already feeling a little stressed like it's going to burn. No, it's not going to burn. It's okay. very low temperatures. Okay. Very low. So you don't have to worry about that. And it shouldn't stick because it's non stick pan. Yours looks like something that is not a true, like, egg, how perfect that looks. I mean, it really does. It, it kind of looks fake. Yeah, it does. Like, yours doesn't even look like a real egg. That's how good you are. <laughs> You see, that's the confidence you need. Oh, now you're good for my good for my confidence. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of butter. Okay. Right? And then what? And then once it melts down, mm -hmm. we're going to take our spoon mm -hmm. and we're going to just put the butter over the egg whites. Okay, that's, and that's going to help cook it. That's cool. So you're taking a hot liquid. Yes. And you're putting it over your over undercooked eggs. But not on the yolk, just on the whites. Stuff. Just on the whites. Okay. Here you go. I'll show you this perfect egg, which is almost done. Only yes. Another 30 seconds. Oh, it's almost done. It'll be firm. Okay. So now it's finished. Okay. Now our sunny side up egg, you've done this. Mm -hmm. Easy, just like a pro. Okay. Now we can put it on our plates. Wow. And grab your toast plate. Okay. Making eggs one of the easiest things, but I will tell you this. If you ever want to know how great a chef is, yes. tell them to make you eggs. Really? Why? It takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. And How do you get it off the pan? So you, it just want to fall right on off. Oh, you're It'll just gonna kinda like yep. slide it. Just slide it right on off. We okay. have a little flaky sea salt. Okay, yes. This looks incredible, by the way. Well, you did it. You see? Well. Look at this. Okay. And then but, we got a little black pepper if you like it. How do you know though? I guess I'm still obsessed with this, like the yolk. How do I know if it's like runny or thick enough? The yolk is the easy part. Okay. You want it runny. It's right. the it's the whites okay. that you want cooked. Okay. So the whites are cooked, the yolk is runny, mm -hmm. that's sunny side up. Look and it us. Toast. Just two chefs yeah. making eggs. Cheers. <laughs> yes. You want to try it out? This is what everybody wants. Oh my here. gosh, so good. And of course, I like to mop it up with the toast. Yes. Mmm. That's delicious. So good. Darnell, I think we're ready to graduate to something even trickier. So you ready to go into omelet making? I am. So let's have a good toast to those sunny side of eggs that we made. We always have a cocktail on the show. I love it. I think we're mimosing today. <laughs> Let me see. Mm -hmm. mm. That's delicious. Ease up on the orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> omelets are fun. There's not a lot of things you cook that are fun to cook, but omelets are fun to do. Okay, I'm into this. They're fast, they'll make you feel like you're in the NBA for a little bit because you can do it and you'll get your confidence up. The first thing you want to do is what we call mise en place. We have everything laid out first, and then we want to make sure our knife skills are perfect, so the first thing we're going to actually do mm -hmm. is the ham. I've learned a couple things about knives. You're doing great. Okay. There you go. I worry about your hands being out like that. I know. <laughs> Actually, when I took piano lessons when I was six, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clorette made us do the piano like this. You know, you're supposed to have curved fingers. That's yeah. what, I need to remember that. It's a great way. So just small pieces, okay. consistent sizes. Okay. That way the omelet is 
pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. This looks so good. Okay. All right, chopped enough. We got plenty of ham. Yes. Ham right. is my favorite, though. So good. Ham, wait till you try the candy bacon. Oh, It's going to okay. be your new favorite. I All right. Your kids are going to love it, by the way. Let's do our eggs. Eggs, now. okay. I, I learned from a very wise chef, never on the corner, <laughs> always here. Now so we whisk. whisk it. Okay. I know this from scrambling. Yes. I usually do it with a fork. Does it matter? No. Okay. Whisk is going to put more air into it. So, a little salt and pepper in here. Okay. Oh, yes. Always salt and pepper. Okay. Like this much salt, or is that too much? No, that's great. Like, what about Remember, more? you can always add more later. Okay, I know. I, I tend to under salt, but now I've been told by so many of you chefs to put more salt that I might be over salting. How's that? Good? That looks great. Looks great. Okay. We'll okay. whisk that together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever put milk in it or no? Scrambled eggs, I like to put the fat in there. I like to put the milk in there. And it stretches out your eggs if so you got a kids to cook for at home. Yeah. So I have eight kids. Six who stay at my house full time. So. Oh my gosh. That's why I call my wife my junior chef because she's always cooking for juniors. Oh. So. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Okay. Before we're gonna put a little butter in here. We're gonna yes. let it foam up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is my big question about omelet making. When do you put the toppings in? So there's no right answer to that. Okay. You put it in before, like we're gonna do today. Yeah. And let them cook a little bit. You and mean you put the? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You put the vegetables in before the eggs? Yes, that is one way of doing it. Okay, wow, you're blowing my mind. Now okay. let's go ahead and put whatever vegetables and meats you want to put inside. Okay, so here. this would be when I put the spinach in. Yes. Which I don't usually like spinach, but I want to learn, so I'm putting It'll help it in. soften it up a little bit. Now these are big old leaves. Should I have chopped those small ones? No, they're going to cook down. Mm, I'll put a couple peppers. So we have this going, and remember, all these meats are cured meats, so mm -hmm. they're already cooked enough. Oh, okay. So we're not worried about cooking the meats. Got it. They're right? more like heating them up. Exactly. Okay. Let's go ahead and pour our eggs in. Okay. So this is enough. That's enough. I don't have to wait for these to be brown no. or anything? Okay. No. Okay. There you go. Pour it right in there. Okay. Ooh. Fancy. Okay. All right. So now go ahead and scramble your egg a little bit. Okay. Because we want to get everything evenly incorporated. Okay. So there you go. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going to let it set. Perfect. Right, get over there. I want it to look like yours does that. Okay. <laughs> so look, now I'm going under my egg a little bit, mm -hmm. allowing the runniness to run off uh -huh. and go underneath it. Nope. So you don't have I any don't have any runniness. So you have a little bit right well, there. Well, right there. Should yep. I just make a hole for it? There you go. We'll help each other out. Okay. There you go. And then no, you don't have much. Okay. Oh, but I want that. Oh, I see. So like any of this little extra bits. Yep. Now it's cooking. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it like this for one second. So do you feel like a spatula like this is the good implement? Like the you easiest? You need a rubber spatula. A rubber spatula. Yep. Okay. Would you rather just put our toppings right here and fold it over or do you want to flip an omelet first? I think I need to learn to flip. Okay. We're going to assist the flip. It's called okay. an assisted flip. Assisted flip. I have my spatula under a little. Yes. And I'm going to use that to help me flip my egg over. Oh, the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. No way can I do this. Your no left way. hand is hard yes, for left-handed left people. Everything's hard for us. So go towards the top. Wait, what? Oh, because yeah. I was gonna I was gonna flip it that way, but oh, you don't that's think more I... comfortable. I'm not left-handed. Okay, so yeah. So everything's different for people okay, who are. Yeah, yep. we're special us. So go under a lot okay, and then you want to assist okay. it with the flip over like that. <sighs> I'm scared. <laughs> it's I don't like know. jumping in a pool. I can't. Okay, one you have it. I know it's gonna fail. Okay, one, I don't wanna ruin it. See? See? No, you're good. I didn't. Now you go back and you just get the rest over. Okay, but See? that wasn't good. That like, was good. Is it supposed to? No, I did it wrong. No, you're perfect. But is it? Look, it's folded now like a burrito. <laughs> you're going to fold it over again. It's okay. Okay. So now you'll so put your cheese inside. Just leave it, just roll inside. with it like that? Yep. Okay. Now you'll put, I like Gruyere cheese. Okay, me too. Which so one's I, that? that <laughs> <this> <laughs> that's that one, yes. I like that too. So put it on the furthest point of your omelet. Oh, that's interesting. Why is that? Because you're going to flip it over and you want all that heat to sit right on top of it. I'm gonna do, which, is this sausage? That is sausage. Sausage is yes. my favorite. Ham yeah. is my favorite. I'm going for it. There you go. And all, all on the side too again. Yep, all on that okay. side. Mm -hmm. okay. You did a good job flipping. Thank you. I, you did. I don't know, I want it, but it, was it supposed to be like half like this or was it supposed to really be covering the see, whole thing? this can? is at home cooking. You know, now if you were in the restaurant and we had to, see this is what you're about to eat at home. So I that know. is perfect for at home. But I want to get an A, <laughs> Darnell. I want to so be that's like. That's an A, A minus, but okay. it's still an A. Okay, okay, you know? so okay. Then I want to flip my egg okay, over we're flipping to the other again. side. Oh, like another folder, like yep. this, like that? Yep, just fold it over. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, assisted, assisted with Darnell. 
Now, now it's getting kind of brown. Is that too brown? No, you're fine. I mean, look, this is a disaster. That is good. No, you know it isn't. And now this, these guys are falling out. Well, technically, you're going to eat them anyway. Okay. So you got to keep your eyes on the prize. But I don't think they're getting too warm. There you go. <laughs> Come on, Darnell. You know this is a fail. You don't have to be nice about it. Can I just creep those guys in? Yes. There? Okay. All right. And then we put it on our plates. That's it? Yeah, that's you, it. I wouldn't flip it again? I feel no. like it needs another flip. Flip yours one more time. See? There you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I like to flip a lot. This is the saddest omelet. You know it. We all know it. Let's compare. Oh. Not wonder who bad. did what. <laughs> it doesn't so, look that bad. No, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're being hard on yourself. Okay. This is just one part of breakfast. Oh. We still have to do the candied bacon and the powerful pancakes. Oh, okay. So, so I'll go these get, get these on the table. All right. Everybody loves bacon. No, everyone loves candy bacon. I was gonna say, usually if I make bacon, I just put it in the microwave. Can we still be friends? We can be friends, because if you're cooking, that means I'm eating. Friends, okay. So okay. Yes. <laughs> but candied bacon seems intimidating. Yes. Super Chefs, our restaurants, are the home of the candied bacon. Okay. This is our specialty. You cannot even come in and ask for regular bacon. We don't offer it. How do we do it? So I'm gonna open up the pack. Okay. I'll open it for you. You yeah. can get us one, I'll get us a half a cup of brown sugar okay. in that bowl for you. Okay, all right. Like just pack it a little? Yeah, pack it okay. down. We're gonna lay our bacon okay. sideways. So if you're cooking bacon at home, mm -hmm. the reason why the microwave isn't the best method yeah. is because it shrivels down the bacon. Well, that's true. Yep. Whereas if you cook it on the sheet tray or you cook it in the oven, it keeps the bacon the same length as the bacon. Now you have this like wire rack and foil. What's is that necessary? It's really necessary for candy bacon. Okay, okay. So we have the wire rack, that way the bacon doesn't cook in its own fat. So how'd it, you get into cooking dough now? I got into cooking by watching Emerald on TV. He was my inspiration. He was very unique. And if I wasn't going to be a chef, I was going to be a Navy SEAL. So he had a really good uniform on. And uh -oh. I wanted to wear a uniform. <laughs> so he just, Now you have a chef's uniform. Yeah, now we have chef coats, which everyone has to wear all the, I'm going to get you a chef coat. Oh, I, well, yep. I don't know if I deserve it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to freshly crack black pepper on top of it. How much? How much pepper do you like? A little bit. I only like a little. So I don't put a, we'll put a little bit on there. See, okay. that's the thing about cooking. It's about the person, not the recipe. I'm going to go lot. right down one piece first. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. See, you're a rebel. You just went everywhere. I, like I that. know. It's like, well, I didn't know. Now I see I should have watched you first. Yours is more classy. No, so you're putting a lot on there. Well, I want to taste you something like it, besides yeah. sweet. Because mm -hmm. black pepper also has a little heat to it. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to sprinkle brown sugar on top of each piece. So, Be yeah. as attentive as you would like to. Okay. There we go. So if you want to grab these two and take them to the oven, I can okay. open the door for you. Oh, we're you. doing oven, we're not frying. Yeah. No, always at home. Turn your oven on 400 degrees, yes. put your bacon on a rack, and just put a timer. Oh, you really? You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. It'll come out perfectly, and it won't lose all of its size. Oh. No. We'll go ahead and put these in the oven on 400, 400. for 25 minutes. Okay, got it. Does it matter which rack? No, because we're going to use both of them. Okay. Now, if we had the broiler on, then it matters which rack. Okay. But since we have it on bake, 
it won't matter. All right. See, you are almost there with candied bacon. That now. wasn't that hard. No, that was easy. Yeah. Okay. So I gave you a personal recipe of mine. So, you know, I worked on this for years to perfect it. This is the Darnell Ferguson perfect pancake. Right yes, here. this okay. is it right here. So we're going to start with the batter first. Bye bye, this quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bye bye. Okay. So what we're going to do first is our wet mix. We're okay. going to start with our version, well, my version of buttermilk. Okay, two cups. Now, why not just use old buttermilk? Like, why are we using our own? Okay, so this is what happened. In the restaurant, mm -hmm. buttermilk is so expensive yeah. compared to regular milk mm -hmm. that I could not feasibly charge people what I had to for how much the buttermilk was oh. costing me. So, I figured out how to make the same exact okay. thing happen. So, milk plus, oh, this looks like a quarter cup of, yep, of the distilled vinegar. Distilled vinegar, yep. Okay, and am I just stirring this up? Nope, just let it sit. Oh, okay. Let it sit, the curdle a little bit. You see it's getting a little thicker Oh, up I top. do see that. See, oh, like okay. buttermilk would get. Interesting. Yep. So we have that going on. Now let's go ahead and crack three eggs inside of here. Okay. There we go. There for your shells. Okay, yeah, all right. Thank you. You you wanted to use the side of this at first. I could tell. I did. <laughs> I but I fought the urge because you taught me, and I don't want you to think I'm not listening. I am definitely Thank you. listening. Thank yeah. you. Let's try this last egg one-handed. Yeah. So the key with one-handed oh. eggs is you just want to separate it like this. That way, when you crack it right in the middle, you're just pulling it apart. Okay, I don't know how this is gonna it go. It was a little nervous when I had to learn it my first time. There you go. Now you just pull it, there you go. Look! Ah, look at Stop! You. Oh Good my gosh, job. I did, I would, I would high five you, but I'm all yoky. Okay, now am I whisking these? Yep, you're gonna go ahead and whisk them together. Okay. Am I trying to get air like I was to the other? Nope, the just omelet? incorporating. Okay. There you go. So Perfect. is that good? Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and add our vanilla to our eggs. Okay, let me see. It says two, I'm obsessed with three, a one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. One teaspoon of vanilla going right in there. This is our wet mix. That's it. So you can go ahead and pour this inside of here if you like. Okay. See that? Slow. That's what we want right wow, there. Wow, look at that. How interesting. It's all lumpy. Yep, okay. just like buttermilk. Yeah, okay. Yep, so let's mix. So now this is where I could get kind of messy. So we'll move that to the side now, because you is, have it done and it's perfect. Is it whisked you know, enough? Well, it's going to be whisked enough now. Uh, <laughs> so now we have our dry mix. We have our mm -hmm. flour here. Yes. We're going to add sugar. We are sugar. adding three, four, three quarter a cup. cup sugar. Okay. This says one teaspoon baking soda. Then two baking powder. Okay. Yep. You need twice as much baking powder than you okay. do baking soda when you're making this batter. Okay, good to know. There you go. So we got a little salt going in there too. How much? One teaspoon. I hate it when they don't tell me how much, you know? I want to know. Yeah. It's always like, you chefs, it's always like, a sprinkle of this, a dash of that. <laughs> like, well, what about us mortals? We don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, now, do I stir oh, it? 
There you go. Okay. Now I'm just kind of mixing it yep. about. Incorporating it in before mm -hmm. we mix everything at one time. Okay. Flour is so messy. This is where you put the apron on in the restaurant. Yes. You put it on at home. I really should. But I wanted to wear this sweater because we're going to make magic. <laughs> Abracadabra. A little bit in. Mm -hmm. And start stirring. Yep. Now is this one of those things where you don't want to like, oh shoot, over mix? This is that thing. Okay. That you don't want to over mix. How's my whisking technique? Like you whisk with your shoulders. Okay. You want to whisk with your wrist. Like your what? Wrist. Like that? Yep. So more like Wait, this. Show me. You see, mm -hmm. less. Uh, so when you're doing it, your whole arm is into it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to. I'm whisking. Yep. Okay. There you go. It already looks. You like see your nice air bubbles starting yes. to form. And air bubbles are okay, right? That's air bubbles are what's going to make it rise. Oh. You know, it's going to be those little pockets of air that's going to form. So you're perfect right there. You don't need to mix. Look at you. Clean whisk. Clean whisk. I was never worried. <laughs> so right. now we're going to move over to this contraption here. Okay. This, this is, is our flat top griddle, which is also my favorite cooking utensil in the kitchen. So we have it turned on 300 degrees. Okay. Look all how right. much fat is on there. That's okay. all you need. Okay, wow. So we're gonna get one ladle right there. Mm -hmm. Does this look? That looks great. Okay. Go right in the middle of that. Ooh. There you go. Okay. Do you want me to do yours? Another, yep, do one for me. Mm -hmm. Now, big question would be, when do you put the toppings in? Like, when it's almost cooked, do I do it now? Always put the toppings in before you're going to flip it. Okay. Because what happens is, if you put them in now, imagine we put these big old chips inside yes. of it now. It's going to weight down the batter yeah. from rising. We want it to rise, right? Yeah. When do you flip the pancake? So you'll see the bubble starting to form. Mm -hmm. You'll see the outside of it starting to not break over. Now, I shouldn't be like messing with it, right? No, you shouldn't. You like to touch your food I when do. you're cooking I it. I want to see what's <laughs> happening. I get antsy. The goal is when you flip it, you don't want to flip it and the batter runs everywhere. Why That's is it, it already smelling so good? Because I did the recipe. <laughs> it has so, a little Darnell magic. About two minutes, two and a half minutes okay. on each side. Okay. We're okay. ready to flip now, some well, pancakes. Wait. All right, All right, let's watch the flip. We already okay. have, okay. See, I'm going under first. Mm -hmm. Make sure I got enough underneath oh, God, it. God, the pressure. And then just Go a on. good flip. Mine's bigger. This is, <laughs> this is like, okay, come on. Confidence. Come on. See, confidence. Come on, do it. One, do two, it. ready, go. Yes! Perfect. Look at that. Yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah, and I see you want to smash it down. I do. I no, wanted to no, so no, bad. I see I wanted you. To... You wanted to smash it down I so did. bad. I can what? tell. No, because you want it to rise. Okay. You know, allow the baking powder, baking soda, and the vinegar to do what they were created to do. Wow, you really get me. So let's toast to okay. your pancake flipping, mm -hmm. your omelet half flipping. Half flipping. I'm you know, working on that. But you're doing a great job. What about egg cracking? Oh, the egg was 100%. One hand. <laughs> One handed egg, egg cracking. cracking. So we're ready to go have the plate here, and then okay. our next go around, we're going to just get creative. Ooh. There you go. Yum. Now let's drop some more pancakes Now, do I need there. to respray? Well, I'm going to wipe it down first because you okay. can see the oil now yeah. has started to burn. Yeah. I'm going to spray it up. Yep. I'm going to do yours too. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's see if I've learned this at all. How's that look to you? That's Enough? great. Okay. Now, wait 10 years while it cooks on each side. <laughs> it does take some time. I will it give does. you that. It does. Now, because the previous Savannah that had not been personally trained by Darnell, would have probably flipped it right then. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, bubbles. But now I know, kind of wait. Even bubbles. Patience, grasshopper. So what kind of toppings are you going to, what kind of filling are you going to put in these? I'm going I, funfetti for sure. Yeah, I think if my kids were here, they would definitely not pick the blueberries because it <laughs> seems healthy and close to the earth. Yeah. They'd go more for this. Yeah, so you're going to do so chocolate and peanut butter? I think butter? I'm going to do chocolate and funfetti. Is that crazy? Or chocolate and peanut butter? Now that sounds like a chocolate peanut Snickers butter sounds made in good. Yeah, that yeah. does. Okay, I'm, you're right. Chocolate okay. peanut butter. So go ahead. Now it's time. Oh, Look yeah, it's time. Pancake. Okay, so now I'm going to see how you just spread throughout or only in the middle? Oh, all so, throughout. My kids would die over that. That's so fun. Now look, I want to flip it, but now, you're now ready. am I? Because then this is going to be right against the hot stove. That's okay. Oh, that's what we want. Oh, okay. Same time, okay. Oh, God. One. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh there boy. Go. Stressed out. One, two, ready, go. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's a oh, perfect look at, pancake. Look at, no. Almost, <laughs> you almost swished it down. I'm never using the yes. box batter again. Yes. That we're looks ready. done, right? Yep. Okay. So I like to put them upside down so you can actually see which pancakes are which. Yes. Look at that. Ding, ding. That looks so good. Okay, bacon's almost done. Should we do a couple more, I guess? Yes, let's drop yep. a couple more while we get the bacon out the oven. Can you save this batter, by the way? You can use that batter for the next five days. No! So make it one time, 
cook a little bit that day, and the next morning you wake up, that's how people cook pancakes every morning. Oh my gosh. It is that time to get this bacon. Okay. There you go, so you don't burn yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've heard about me. <laughs> Ooh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. Shut up. Ah, graceful as always. Okay. Man, that looks good. Look at that bacon. Oh my gosh. Yum, this is perfect. It oh, seriously looks so pro. Now I'm just trying I'm to. Extremely hungry. I know, me too, me so too. One thing you want to do is yeah. while the bacon's still hot, yes. you want to move it off the tray. Okay, because so. if you let the bacon sit, then it has that chance that it's hardening from, oh. the, from the candy. Hardening, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so move that. Yeah. Perfect mm -hmm. gloss on top of the bacon. I mean, it looks. See perfect. a little specks of brown sugar. I imagine this is the one you make because it has less brown sugar yeah. on it. I'll take the. <laughs> it's little true, but that's good to pieces. know. I am starving now. Okay. All right, shall we? Want to grab the pancakes? Yes, let's go eat. Breakfast with the Breakfast King, let's go. Oh, and now the Breakfast Queen. <laughs> exactly, well, trying. Maybe Princess. Princess. A, the Breakfast Apprentice. <laughs> okay, my omelet doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's a little no. wonky, but I'm sure it'll taste just fine. Mm. Pretty good if I do say so myself. How's yours? Whoever made this knew what they were doing. I gotta eat the pancakes. I mean, come on. That's good. That is so delicious. It's oh nice and light. It's light, it's fluffy. Goodbye boxed mix. Yes. Hello Darnell. A couple more oh ingredients to buy at the grocery store, but it's worth it. It's worth it, it doesn't take that much longer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. They have that to try is, the bacon too. Okay. Oh yeah, the bacon. You forgot all about the bacon. I know. I did actually. That is delicious. I'm glad you like it. We love to have people over. I love to cook a big old breakfast. This is a good time to kind of show off and make it seem like you got skills. Yep. And all it takes is a little sprinkle, some chocolates, mm. uh, chips, and some peanut butter chips. Oh yeah. It takes it out to a whole nother level. And the candied bacon. That will be the star of your house if you have a party or brunch and you have that. I mean, people will never leave. Well, now you have to put it in two-go boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way they know it's not for here forever. Thank you so much for teaching me. No, thanks for allowing me to be easy, understanding, and not touching the food so much. <laughs> well, I feel like you gave me some really good secrets, like some special just Darnell stuff, and I'm so honored. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Things I've just been working on for about 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Right? Gave them to you in 10 to 12 minutes. I know. <laughs> it's like all this heart. I'm really excited to oh, try it. You did a great job. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. That's right. <laughs> hey there, welcome to The Boost. We're feeling festive today. So we are set to introduce you to some real life holiday heroes spreading joy all across the country. First up, our very own Craig Melvin. Together with his family, they are giving back in a remarkable way turning a beloved house into a home for those in need 
just in time for Christmas. What makes a house a home? This small, one-level house outside Columbia, South Carolina has been in my family for generations. It was actually built by my great-grandmother in 1950. It was also the first home my mother ever knew, staying here right after she was born. This was your first house, right? It was. This was where I came home to with my mom, who was an 18-year-old mother. My mom's family moved out, and my Aunt Margaret lived in the house for decades. For folks who don't know, what was that mom like? And Margaret was fun. She didn't have any children, so she made sure that we had stuff. Over the years, we spent many happy times here on Sundays after church or on holidays. But Aunt Margaret had a lot of health issues. After she died, we realized the house was going to be sold at a court-ordered auction to settle unpaid medical bills. We couldn't let that happen, so we bought the house as a Mother's Day gift for my mom to keep it in the family. Together, we decided it could serve a greater purpose. We decided to lease it to a nonprofit called Family Promise for 25 years, for a dollar a year. Family Promise provides transitional housing to families in need. Jeffrey Armstrong is the executive director of the local chapter of Family Promise. What a gift like this does is has a ripple effect because it allows families to remain together. So you don't have the, the mother or father figuring things out while the children stay in different places. Before anyone could move into the house, it needed work, a lot of work. My family paid for the project and dozens of local businesses and organizations helped to renovate the house. To say they took it down to the studs would be an understatement. Over a series of months, they redid everything. Oh my goodness, Craig. When you walked in for the first time, what'd you think? I started crying. I just, I just started crying. Cause I, mm, it's more than I could have imagined. I cried a little bit too. This is a lot of memories. Now it was time for some new families to make memories here. My mom and I were there to welcome the first to move in. Jamila Buchanan with her 15-year-old son, Jakai, and five-year-old daughter, Jania. They moved to Columbia from Tennessee last March and had been living in shelters and in churches until they found family promise. Oh, my God. Hey! 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 <laughs> we took them on a tour of their new home, each child with a room of their own. Oh, look at your room, Jania. This is so pretty the little touches making them feel at home. A welcome change from the past few years. What's the last few years been like for, for you? What's it been like for them? My steady, you know. Um, being that I was raised like that, I think it kind of followed me throughout my adulthood, you know. Stability is important. Very. <laughs> and were you having a hard time um, finding a place to live? Yes. When we moved here, I was wanting to find a place within a couple of months, but it didn't work out that way. So that's when I called Family Promise. And they were like angels. Yes. <laughs> God sent. <laughs> Come on, princess. The angels were with us when we all found one last surprise in back of the house, a playset with a plaque to honor my late niece, Jasmine, who died of cancer at the age of three. Ready? A reminder that nothing is more precious than family. No place more important than home. <laughs> Higher? Higher? Now to students at Kip Star Harlem Elementary right here in New York. They are incredibly passionate about giving back to their community. So we wanted to do a little something for them. Check out this surprise for all 400 students that they didn't see coming. Hi, I'm here to collect toys for the toy drive. The spirit of giving echoes through the hallways of Kip Star Harlem Elementary in New York City. We have so many toys. Students from kindergarten to fourth grade are devoted to giving back to their community. Have a nice day. Not just this holiday season, but year round. Toy drive! It all started with a simple sock drive called Socktober. Their goal was to collect 1,000 pairs for community shelters. But a fire had ignited within them and they beat their goal by nearly tenfold. We brought in 9,300 pairs of milk! Oh! Principal 
Brandy Vardaman says she was blown away. The kids taught me a lot about raising my bar. They also taught me about just this idea that you're never too young to understand what it means to help someone else. The kids kept the donations going with a Thanksgiving food drive and now a holiday toy drive, proving even the tiniest helper can make the biggest impact. The kids are absolutely full of light and absolutely filled with love. I visited the school to catch up with some of its star students. You know what I love about your school? What? You guys give back. Tell me why it's important to give back. A lot of people are less fortunate than we are nowadays, so giving them back makes me feel like they have been loved by someone. It's no fear. fear if we don't give back, they don't get anything, but if we give them stuff, they get stuff. And we want the world to be fair so everybody could have the same life as us. Wow, you guys have such big hearts. You know, a lot of kids are concentrating on what they get. They're thinking about, I want Santa to bring me this and this. But you guys are talking about what you're going to give. Sometimes people have to take matters into their own hands and become the Santa for them. Oh, we're basically like mini Santas also. You're mini Santas? Yes. Oh, do you guys have a good team? Yes. Do you have a great team? Yes. Someone tell me how many toys you have collected so far. At least 20 to 30 toys. Yeah. Should we go check on that toy drive? Yeah. yeah. The kids have no idea that Santa's elves work their holiday magic. Come on in. Come on in. Macy's and Toys R Us donated 500 toys. Oh, wow. And now you can give these away to kids who are in need. This is awesome. Meanwhile, just down the hall, the entire student body is gathered for what may be their most memorable school assembly yet. You guys are some of the most generous people. Do you know why you're so generous? Because you keep giving back. Do you know what you do? Keep giving back. You're amazing. I want my little girls to be just like you. You know what? We think that it's time to give a little something back to you. Everybody in this auditorium is getting a Christmas present. Will you open up this curtain? Macy's and Toys R Us is giving every single student a holiday present. A joyous celebration of the season of giving. With children who live it every single day. Just ahead, a simple act of kindness that started a movement up in Vermont. Stay with us.
right, guys, here's another story to give your day a little extra boost. Check it out. What's better than giving, right? It's the best feeling in the world. 23-year-old Ashley Smith is on a mission to give back, one toy at a time. It's a simple story. We give kids toys that have been affected by natural disasters, and they come in with a frown and they leave with a smile. For Ashley, this is personal. When she was just eight years old, her family lost their home in a single house fire. As a firefighter, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow when it happens to you. As a parent, it's very stressful. So I can't imagine what a child feels. The one thing I didn't get when I lost my house right away was my toys. If you want your stuffed animal to sleep with, you want to be able to throw a football or kick a soccer ball. In the summer of 2007, when Ashley saw hundreds of families impacted by the Angora fire that ravaged South Lake Tahoe in California, she knew she needed to help. My dad, who's a firefighter, was fighting it, and he was sending us pictures to let us know he was okay. And I recognized the burnt toys because my toys were burnt. And I said, Mom, we have to help those people. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, we're going to collect toys. And I'm like, toys? You've got to be kidding me. They don't need toys. From a mom's perspective, they need food and shelter and water and clothes and all of those things. She's 100% right. I'm like, all right, let's do it then. What started as one small toy drive has grown to an official nonprofit called Ashley's Toy Closet. In the last 15 years, Ashley has donated an estimated 6 million toys to kids around the country. You can either be as young or as old as you want to make a difference. Just make kids leave with big smiles and a little bit of kindness in these dark times. Parents like Rachel Baxley know Ashley's kindness firsthand. It's a lot of disbelief until you see the actual remains of your home and everything you worked for in ashes. Just a few weeks later, Rachel's kids, Justin and Belle, went on a shopping spree at a toy drive organized by Ashley's Toy Closet. And I seen my kids smile and just total pure joy on their faces. It just warmed my heart and it just made me feel at peace for a moment during the chaos. In October, Ashley made a cross-country trip to give back to families devastated by Hurricane Ian in Florida. I was really excited. And so I was skipping along, and when I got in there, I was just running around like, yes! They were so in awe and so shocked and so overwhelmed with joy. And Ashley's impact continues even after the toy drives are over. She can be such a light to all these little babies that shouldn't be going through this hard stuff. Thank you for bringing back their joy. It was time to pay it forward to Ashley, so we enlisted some help from a friend. Ho, ho, ho! My elves have told me that Ashley has made a difference for families across America. So today, we have a very special surprise for her. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Ashley! Merry Christmas! I understand you have a very special gift, and that's yes. the gift of giving. Okay. Hasbro has heard about the special mission of Ashley's Toy Closet, and they are contributing $10,000 worth of toys. Thank you, thank you, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, God, you all knew! <laughs> I couldn't do it without everybody standing here, and I can't thank everybody enough. Right here, right here. How are you? Truly a holiday to remember. Wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now let's go to a Vermont dad who found a way to show his kids the value of giving back by literally warming the hearts and homes of those around them. Craig shared his story for his Dad's Got This series. He may look the part, but Eric Axelrod wants you to know he's not a professional logger. Weekends, I'm out there volunteering because it's an awesome commitment, right? It's, it's something that I've, I believe in. And to be clear, you're not a lumberjack. I learned how to cut firewood safely. I heated my home for almost 15 years. 
And, you know, I'm good at watching YouTube videos. <laughs> With a little prodding from his family, Eric started a nonprofit organization called Wood for Good in 2019. Its mission? To provide families in need with firewood to heat their homes. How did Wood for Good come to be? We had some extra wood in our yard. And my wife said to me, what are you going to do with all that? And I said, I don't know, we'll have it for next year. And she said, why don't you give it to some families in need? Shortly thereafter, my uh, older son was really moved by a family that we brought wood to. And he said to me, you know, I love this, Dad. I want to do it every day. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming out. These days, Eric relies on a group of volunteers that meet for weekend outings to help process and deliver the firewood. His sons, Devin and Logan, now 17 and 14, and his stepkids, Leo and Ivy, are part of the core group. Actually delivering the wood, you see the real smiles, and you're like, I'm not going to go cold this winter. We've had people who are, you know, burning their own furniture. They, they have no wood. They have no heat in Vermont, where it's, it's really cold, and they, it's kind of something that I feel like everyone should have. When you finish loading the truck or you finish splitting a load of firewood, it feels like you're accomplishing something that, that's meaningful and you're helping other people. Explain for folks who aren't familiar with winter in Vermont why firewood is so crucial. 40% of Vermonters heat with wood to a certain extent. Wow. Much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Much appreciated. Like many Vermonters, Joyce Blaisdell relies on a wood stove to heat her home. She contacted Eric after her husband underwent a surgery that made it impossible for them to split their own firewood this year. We're not the type of people who ask for help. We find a way to do it on our own. And when I did ask for help, it was just like instant. That touched my heart. As you go from, from home to home, you probably see some folks who are struggling. What have you seen over the years when you, when you drop off the wood? We brought wood to this family, and their father had just died. I didn't know that. And when we dropped the wood off, their younger daughter said, Daddy used to do this. And the mom started crying. Um, so just kind of moving moments where it's, you know, this is why we do it. I remember thinking like every time I'd come back to the woodlot, I'd be like, oh my God, how did you get this much wood split? Like if he puts his mind to doing something, it just, it just, just gets done. It started as you and your two sons taking wood to some families who needed it. Yes. What do you think you've taught them? How uh, it's really a privilege to be involved in giving back. Why? I feel really firmly that the world would be a much better place if more people were involved. And it's the fabric that brings us closer together because we're, we're more alike than we are different. And if people work together on helping people, I think it would help to heal some of the division. After the break, we're going to meet a dynamic duo bringing Christmas spirit to those who need it the most. Don't miss it.
We're back on the boost with the story of two real life superheroes. They are on a journey across the country, helping Americans most in need. NBC's Steve Patterson has a look at their quest to spread holiday cheer. All right, let's do it. Santa might have that magic sleigh, okay. but all Yuri and Rodney need is a cargo van. Right, right. Loaded up with gifts, just like Jolly St. Nick, the pair travels an incredible distance to deliver Christmas magic. Okay. He's our favorite superheroes. That's Yuri Williams, the stormtrooper, with trusted sidekick Rodney Smith, the elf, hoping to spread some Christmas cheer to families who could use a little. In the past four years, this dynamic duo has crisscrossed the country, visiting families in all 50 states, a 17,000 mile journey in less than a month. From Kentucky to California, Oregon to New Jersey, where the guys are bringing joy to Jaden, suffering from severe seizures. And Ariana, struggling with a degenerative brain disease. How are you? I'm happy. For Yuri, it's a familiar pain. Just hearing that mother's love remind me My mom, you know, while we were coloring with her, it just brings memories back of when I was a kid, just coloring. And, you know, it's times like this, I get caught in the moment. He lost his mother to cancer in 2009. Do you ever get on each other's nerves? Uh, he gets some mine. I'm Santa's favorite elf. <laughs> he's just mad that he's, he's second. They is priceless. The toys are amazing. In this season of giving, it's a road worth traveling. I love you, buddy. Be good, okay? To lend a little hand of hope. Steve Patterson, NBC News. Jenna and her sister Barbara have been on their own journey hosting signings for their new book, Love Comes First. And in Mississippi, they met up with a couple of hometown stars to get some holiday inspiration. Okay, sissy, New Orleans to Laurel. Mississippi, here we come. Let's go visit the Napiers. Barbara and I hit the road again, and this time we brought along my daughter, Poppy. Yay, this is gonna be fun. It looks like they're getting ready for Christmas. What a cute town. I'm glad you asked me to come. We met Ben and Aaron Napier at the Scent Library, one of their three shops in Laurel, Mississippi. Oh, look, there they are. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Nice to meet you, Mrs. and Mr. Napier. Hello, so nice, so nice to meet you. you. This is my sissy, Barbara. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. People think small towns not cool, but they're wrong. Now in their seventh season, the HGTV show Hometown follows the couple as they restore historic homes while also navigating life with two young daughters. And we were excited to visit their hometown. Well, you called us. We're trying to finish up the last tree for our window display. With the holiday season upon us, the Napier shared some unique tips on decorating their Christmas tree. Big fan of satin ribbons and all the Okay, I'm colors. into this. So when we do them at home, we just let them dry like we oh, do. Oh, so you we can do them do up or down. That's right. Dang, that one looks really that good. That looks really good. Shall Let's we do? try? I like the gold. The more drapey, drippy, the better. I drapey, like the drippy. velvet. See, I think you want it a little drippier. This drippier. looks pretty. So what is your holiday tradition? Um, Every year we give the girls a different Ornament. ornament. Yeah. And what we do to make it special is that we write in Sharpie on the back Aww. their initials and the date so you remember. Really and then I write with love. Oh. J-B-H. I think every tree has to have the sentimental, and these are my favorite, the old world style. Yeah. I never sentimental. saw a tree that didn't have an ornament. So you don't use a tree skirt, you just stack books? At home I use a basket, and here I use books. Well, I am the book lady. I have a million books, but I really want to do, don't you think I should do books around my own tree? Yeah, that's really cute and clever. Gather around. So do you keep going? Yeah, you just go all the way around making this like fan pattern. And I think if you go with your most colorful ones on the outside edge, it looks the best. Yes. Look how cute this is. And something new to us, an orange rind garland. It's pretty niche. We Dry the orange slices. Okay, Barbara, this orange slice could also be us. Tell us how you do that. You slice them and you put them on cookie sheets and you bake them low and slow at like 170 for several hours. Okay, so see, should we string together? Let's string. You just put them on here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could turn into the DIY mom you've been trying to be. I've been wanting to be a DIY mom in my later years. Yeah. It takes a lot of effort. Puppy, am I a DIY mom? Definitely not. <laughs>
<laughs> Definitely not. I might not be a DIY mom just yet, but lucky for me, Erin is. She creates candles where every scent has a story, and I got to create my favorite for Hoda. It's very spicy. That reminds me of cinnamon too. This one, tree, tree lot. lot. To me, Hoda's, she could be spicy. It's woodsy. This She's is, spicy. This is delightful. But How are y'all? Nice to meet you. you. Since the Napiers hosted a signing for our new book, Poppy wanted to do a reading. I want to introduce you to Poppy. Hi, this is my mom's book that just came out. It's called Love Comes First. We're sisters first, my sissy and me. Friends become family, families become friends. There's always room because love never ends. The end. Thank you guys Good for job, listening. Poppy. Good job. You want to pass some books, sissy? Okay. And of course, before we left, the Napiers asked Poppy to do the honors of lighting their newly decorated Christmas tree. We've got another fun story for you. You do not want to miss it. It's right after this. Boost, it's time for your daily morning boost. Check it out. We take a look at the sweet interaction between a UPS driver named Frank and a two-year-old boy named Owen. It happened just moments after Frank helped the family get their dog back in their house. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. <laughs> oh, I love you too. Thank you. We need lots of love in the world, absolutely. Okay, it didn't end there though. Frank also told Owen that he was one of Santa's helpers and that he'll put a good word for <laughs> Owen. Frank says joy and love in this world is what children doing? should oh, oh, what a sweetie. Oh, Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you, we got you into the holiday spirit and we're gonna bring you even more joy tomorrow, right here on Today All Day. Happy holidays and welcome to Popstar Plus, everybody. There's nothing quite like the magic of a good holiday movie, but have you ever wondered just how they came to life? We're gonna give you behind the scenes look at some of the best holiday films of all time. We've got some great interviews from the directors behind The Holiday and Home Alone. We're also going to visit some iconic sets from some Hallmark movies that are playing 24-7 in your house maybe right now. You're not going to want to miss this one. You might know our first guest as the brilliant mind behind films like Father of the Bride and The Parent Trap and, of course, The Holiday. Today, correspondent Savannah Sellers had a chance to catch up with Nancy Myers as she spilled all about the great secrets of her films, dishing on everything from how she chooses the cast to which iconic scene was totally unplanned. Take a look. 
know them? We're like twins. You love them. Get out of here. You cry with them. You laugh with them. And we're getting married. Many of your favorite movies have one thing in common, Nancy Myers. And this time of year, one masterpiece from the writer, producer, and director is particularly popular. Oh, yeah. The Holiday, the 2006 film starring Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, Jack Black, and Eli Wallach, has grown a cult following. But surprisingly, it didn't start that way. The movie didn't open in a big, splashy way. I gotta say, I was a little disappointed. The trajectory of the holiday was every year it became more popular. You just watched it for the first time in how long? I feel it's been eight years, nine years. My biggest takeaway was how much I love the actors and how personal some of it was. So it was kind of what I was going through with, you know, my own private Jasper. And so it was great to have Kate Winslet be my voice in some of those scenes. Jasper is the character Kate Winslet. Iris in the film is trying to get over. Some of the exact details of their storyline were pulled directly from an experience Myers herself was having at the time. Myers, known for her casting genius, says she knew exactly who she wanted to play these special parts. I had Cameron and Kate in mind when I was writing. Uh -huh. And I know I met with Kate while I was writing. I think she came to my house and I remember she just sort of did the scene and something's got to give. Perry, I got to go. Of Slow Diane down. on the street with Jack when she finds out that he's with this other woman. And it was just, I loved her. I wanted her. Fans of Myers are obsessed with the aesthetics of her films. A craze Myers says she doesn't totally get, but that she knows what she wants her movies to look and feel like. I try in my movies to keep them timeless in a way. Like I dress people in a way that will work in 20 years or 30 years. And I don't try to do a lot of references or very, you know, the way people speak of the moment. So, so when I heard Blackberry. And you sleep with your Blackberry. So, oh, that one got by me. One more thing that's a sign of the times, shooting in a now shuttered blockbuster. But it gave us a hilarious scene that Myers reveals had some ad-libbing from Black rare on her sets. Well, hello, big dollop. <laughs> a small dollop and a big dollop. I don't think I wrote that, to be honest. I didn't say to him, this time, do 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 I let him go, and she really was laughing at him. Were you laughing on set during that? Of course, I laugh a lot. The sound guy's always telling me to shut up. And a special cameo was just a happy accident. Dustin was eating at a restaurant next door, so he popped in. And it was a long time when I went, what is wrong with me? They're talking about the graduate. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? You want to just be in the scene, and we'll just cut to you, and you can whatever. We didn't do his hair, we didn't put makeup on him. That was what he wore to lunch. And he just said, I can't go anywhere. Another fun behind the scenes fact, Meyer's intervention in a fan favorite scene, Diaz dancing alone. Maria! When we were doing it, she was just so good at it. And I, I, I just went, come here, Ida. Don't be so good. She said, what, what do you mean? I said, just be dorkier. That's why. It's a little clumsy and awkward, and that's what I wanted it to be. So you had to teach her or ask her to make it dorkier. Yes, I did. And as for those rumors of another installment... I've been asked to make a sequel a couple times, you know? And I think about it, and I just think it's good the way it is. I don't know how I won't disappoint. Nothing you do disappoints. I, I don't know that it, could, it was just a moment in time for all of them and for me. And as for our favorite foursome, when you watch it, when you wrote it, where did you imagine they go? I don't, I don't do that. When it ends, uh, it ends for me. But um, to make you happy, <laughs> I believe they, uh, I think they're all together. Another iconic holiday movie, without a doubt, is Love Actually. It became a box office hit back in 2003, and 14 years later, it got a short sequel that aired here on NBC ahead of its release. Our Keir Simmons got a chance to visit uh, at the set and catch up with the entire cast, even made a small appearance in the film himself. Love Actually is back, and so are most of the characters you loved the last time. Been doing very well, haven't we? I think we changed that sofa, though. I hope we do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, right. About seven years ago, I, I painted the kitchen. And we got a cat. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, nice, isn't it? Yeah. So that's been, it's been eventful. Yeah. We're very happy. Yeah. And we don't see him anymore because that was weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's moved on now. Yes, Hugh Grant is still Prime Minister. But there's someone new. What's the best Christmas film ever made? Yes, you've guessed it. They gave me a part. 
Now, for some inexplicable reason. I think it's talent. You, I think the answer is <laughs> going to be talent. You've given me a very small part yes. in this movie. And who better to turn to for advice than the man behind all of it? Just got a few ideas for my costume. Oh, yeah. um, so That's I thought nice. maybe this shirt, yeah. I can't decide which tie I should. Can you help me with which which of these two well, ties I should? I, um, would you I think? mean, my instinct says this one. This one? Go yeah, for the because red. Because I think it might distract from your performance. <laughs> That's what I basically say. He goes nothing. Prime Minister. What and after several the takes. Best Christmas film ever made. <laughs> what do you think is the best Christmas film? Let's be honest, if I am not able to act the part of a reporter asking a question at a news conference, then, then my acting career really has uh, failed before it even started, which I think is true. I think I'm, I'll go back to the day job. How was the scene? I mean, and I suppose what I'm really asking is, is, is how did I do? I had, I had one line. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> really? Because my, my day job is actually being... Uh, uh, television reports, which was what I was playing, so... Yeah, so you should have been good in the role, but right. no, you were, you were unconconvincing, I thought. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> was it the way I said, I asked the question? But I... <laughs> <laughs> no, you were marvellous. <laughs> Want to see it for yourself? The short sequel is all for charity Red Nose Day. It airs tomorrow night on NBC. The new film picks back up with the characters 14 years later and gives a glimpse of where things are. Here we go again. I don't know if you remember, but Colin Firth and Lucia Moniz used to drive in a car. Right, When right. he drove her home, they fell in love in a car. Yeah. Uh, and they're back in a car. And, uh, they've now right. been living together for 14 years, and this is the car uh, that they drive. Their new family car. Well, is it okay. a family, is it not a oh, family? OK. Oh, uh, who knows? <laughs> it's a mystery. You say, in the end, love is the most important thing. Well, I say that it's just absolutely everywhere. I mean, I'm always thinking. When I make a movie, people say, oh, it's sentimental and unrealistic. It's right. about love, yeah. and a million people fall in love every day. I think that love is underestimated as a wonderful glue in the world. Great job there, Keir. When we come back, we're going to go behind the scenes of the comedy A Bad Mom's Christmas. Stick around for that. Welcome back to Popstar Plus, A Bad Mom's Christmas is the holiday sequel to the 2016 film, Bad Moms. It follows three overworked, underappreciated moms as they navigate the stress of the holiday season. And ahead of its release, our own Chanel Jones had a nice fun visit to the set and chatted with the star-studded cast. It's impossible to be a good mom. Screw it. Let's yeah. be bad moms. Oh, I'm in. Yes, to bad, bad moms. Mom. Oh. Last year's hit comedy gave parents everywhere the chance to take a night off. There was something particularly awesome about having a chance for the mamas to pour the wine and the big gulps and head to the movies. Now Kristen, Mila, and Catherine are back. You guys want to get drunk at the food court? Ooh, yeah. Badder than ever. Put a baby in me, Santa number two! And ready to tackle the holidays. Sweetie, we don't drink the tree water. Because we're people, right? Oh, God, make it stop. You know, Christmas is like the Super Bowl for moms. In this version, the three of us, independently, 
go against the ideals of perfection of the holiday season. It grounds it and, and shows the pressure that mothers put on themselves to make Christmas magical. Oh no. What is it? My mother's coming for Christmas. But then throwing in the added wrench of our mothers coming into town. So there's this added dimension uh, that we're not just stressed moms, we are also rebellious teenagers because you do devolve to a rebellious teenager, at least I do, when yes. mom comes in town. Mom? <laughs> Enter Susan Sarandon. You are gonna be my best friend forever. Cheryl Hines and Christine Baranski. How much did this cost? Can you put a price tag on Wonder? Joining the sequel as the Bad Moms Moms. First of all, what drew you to this movie, this project? They did such, such a great job on Bad Moms, which made me laugh, LOL. Made me laugh, LOL. I wasn't expecting that movie to be so um, racy. Yeah, absolutely. And so I just figured this is gotta be a good time. Plus, we all know what Christmas is like, the possible toxic terrain of Christmas. So, you know, it's, it's a wonderful comic place, you know, to uh, explore. But what are the real life moms like with their own kids? Who would be most likely to embarrass your kids on the dance floor? Oh, I consider that my job, totally. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally. I'm very good at that too. Why? Just because? Because you can. <laughs> and actually, after a while they dance with you, like my boys love to take me dancing, and my daughter too. There, that was a big breakthrough when my daughter started dancing with me and not being embarrassed. Aww, that was uh, really fun. Yeah. I would like to hit that mark. Yeah, you will, you will. Last question, what's the one thing you want viewers to know about Bad Moms 2, what would you say? Don't bring your small children. Yeah. And I couldn't let the original Bad Moms leave without dishing on what makes their real life husbands good dads. I have the most incredible husband Luckiest on the planet. On the planet. Oh my sure. God, we're really yeah. lucky in that department. It's not just that we got lucky. It's not like we got the three men on the planet who like want to do housework. It's also that I think we what? understand <laughs> That you, if you want something from your partner, you yes. gotta say it. But we don't think we also need to find a man who's confident enough to be like, like think about where we're all working right now full time, and our partners are like, oh, I'm gonna be the stay at home yeah. dad version. Yeah. And you have to find the husband who's like, yeah, I'm gonna not only just embrace yeah. it, but I'm gonna thrive on it. I found if you drop in the word protected mm. at any point during the day, you get like five days of heaven. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can say it. Yeah, like crossing the street, like we're crossing the street. Are you looking both ways? Daddy is, he protects us. And then I can Ooh. just see the chest come up and I'm like, zing, I'm gonna get a pedicure later. I mean, I'm not joking, but it really is <laughs> We'll be right back with another cool Hallmark holiday movie set visit.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Hallmark rolls out tons of great Christmas movies each year. I know because they run on an endless loop in my home. Many of them are actually filmed during the summer, ironically. Although they're full of winter vibes with snow and cups of hot cocoa, it takes a lot to bring those winter wonderlands to life. Savannah Sellers took a trip to Utah to give us the scoop on how it all comes together in 90 degree weather. The countdown to Christmas has begun. And for many of us, the quickest way to get into the Yuletide spirit is by watching a holiday movie. And action. Merry Christmas, honey. Hallmark is rolling out 40 new films this year and invited us on a behind the scenes visit. Lock it up, it's please. Christmas morning. Of the brand new movie, Haul Out the Holly. We've got everything we need to make Christmas magic happen. Nutcrackers, gifts, the tree, ornaments. Only problem? It is 91 degrees. I've got to get the sweater off. While the finished product might look like a winter wonderland, the weather outside is actually frightful. They're filming during summer in the suburbs of Salt Lake City. So instead of preparing for icy conditions, they're taking heat wave precautions. Need any sunscreen? Not what you'd expect, even for veteran actor Stephen Tobolowski. I thought when I was going to do a Hallmark movie, they're going to drive me up to the to the snow, to the ski areas here in Utah. No, we are in sandy Utah. This bottom layer is just to soak up the sweat. It's nothing but sweat from here down. So how do they get in the Christmas spirit under these conditions? Star Lacey Chabert knows a thing or two. This is my 12th Hallmark Christmas movie. So you're a pro. I love these movies so much. They bring me so much joy to film. Was it difficult at all to get in a Christmas mindset this time of year? Yeah, it's the middle of summer and it's <laughs> extremely hot and we're wrapped in coats and sweaters and hats and gloves and it's 107 <laughs> degrees outside and we are bundled like it's four. Do you have to keep kind of reminding yourself, like, act like you're cold? Always. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a couple times during the scenes, I'll end up like accidentally like fanning myself. <laughs> like, because you're just so hot. <laughs> but you're like, no, cold, cold, yeah. shivering. Because you do, it goes against your bodily instincts. You know, you're trying to cool down. But we have all sorts of tricks for cooling ourselves down, taking those layers off in between, fans, ice packs. It just kind of <laughs> comes with the territory. Lacey's leading man in the movie, Wes Brown, stepped in to teach us some of those on-camera tricks to looking cool. First, wipe the sweat from your brow. Okay, yeah, that can't be seen. No, that can't be seen because right. it's freezing. Then we're just gonna uh, okay. get up next to this guy, <laughs> get warmed up, and then uh, okay. fake fire. You definitely have to get into the shivers while wiping the sweat away. So for this real-life neighborhood, what's it like when Christmas comes to town in summer? For Hallmark superfan Carolyn Thurgood, it's been a dream come true. I've loved it. Yeah. I'm going to miss when everyone leaves because even the Hallmark crew has become my friends. Even Lacey <laughs> Chabert told me happy birthday. The movie's set designer even recruited the actual inhabitants to break out their own decorations a few months early. What has this been like to see your home transformed, your street transformed in the middle of August? So weird. <laughs> so weird, especially when they're blowing the snow. Yeah. And you're like, it really looks like it's winter. You heard her right. These guys' job is to let it snow using a big tank and hose. They spray the set with foam so every shot looks like a winter wonderland. It's gonna stay warm. But in this heat, it melts off in about 15 minutes. So I thought I'd swoop in to help. <laughs> I'm exhausted. You're an expert. This takes some upper body strength. A Christmas miracle on Evergreen Lane. Up next, Home Alone director Chris Columbus reflects on working with young Macaulay Culkin. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Macaulay Culkin was just 10 years old when he rose to fame in Home Alone. In fact, we watched Home Alone 2, the New York one, just last night in The Daily Household. And Macaulay has absolutely, well, he nailed the role as Kevin McAllister, a young boy, if you don't know, who's accidentally left alone after his family leaves for a Christmas vacation. Who can forget that scream heard around the world when Kevin put cologne on his little young face? Well, ahead of the film's 30th anniversary, we sat down with the director, Chris Columbus, who dished on how that scene came to be. Well, the scream was a me- I, I remember that morning very, very clearly. I told Macaulay, Okay, you're gonna put the shave lotion on, I don't forget, skin brace or whatever it was. And I said, you're gonna put it on and go, ah, like something like that, just. I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape. Ah! Macaulay was such, he did have brilliant instinct comedically, even at that young age. He, he kept his hands glued to his face while he was screaming. So I yelled, cut, and the entire crew was doubled over laughing. It was the most unusual acting choice, but a choice that became somewhat iconic 30 years down the road. Hi, uh, my name's Chris Columbus, and I'm the director of Home Alone. Working with Macaulay Culkin was wonderful. When we saw Mac's screen test, we knew we had he was a star. I mean, you had that inkling from his little scene he did with John Candy and Uncle Buck, but when he did a, the screen test for Kevin McAllister, he didn't look like a Hollywood sort of cut out children's character. He looked real, his ear was a little bent. He just, he was, and, and he was immediately and intensely charming and funny. So to work with a kid like that, it was, it, it, it was wonderful. My favorite scenes from Home Alone, I, you know, the stunt scenes particularly are interesting because when we were shooting those in the middle of the night in Chicago, we had two stunt men and it was before CGI and before wires and all of that stuff. So these guys really had to do those stunts just with pads. And we would shoot some of these stunts and I'd yell cut and there was silence from the crew. And we were like, oh my God, is is he dead? We didn't know. And I'd walk up and the guy would jump to his feet. Do you want to do another one? We'd go back to the monitor, watch the stunt, and it was hilarious. It, but it, it needed to be treated with that kind of seriousness, I guess. But we were holding our breaths every time. We never had a, an accident. Nobody ever got hurt. But those stunts uh, were my favorite sort of moments in the movie, particularly when you could see it with an audience. Um, to see those scenes with an audience nearly falling out of their chairs with laughter is kind of a momentous occasion for, <laughs> for a director. I think the paint can stunt on the stairs was probably the most challenging to film. Our stunt person was pretty high up on that staircase in the house. And then when the paint, the paint can not only had to hit him in the face, which was made out of rubber, but he had to fly, he had to send himself flying through the air and land on a floor that was a hardwood floor. Those were uh, pretty painful. The other one was, they were all, to be honest with you, they were all pretty, pretty difficult and worrisome. You know, slipping down the stairs, flipping on the stairs, flying into the the back of the house, slamming into the brick wall. All of those were were pretty hair raising. What's your point? My point is you should call your son. What if he won't talk to me? At least you'll know. Then you can stop worrying about it and he won't have to be afraid anymore. Really my favorite scene aside from the stunts is the scene in the church between old man Marley and Kevin. That to me is extraordinarily touching. I don't care how mad I was, I talked to my dad, especially around the holidays. I have a Christmas doormat in front of my door that says keep the change you filthy animal. Keep the change you filthy animal. So, um, no, and a lot of people I heard recently, people like Seth Rogen and Chris Evans, up until, a, I guess, a few months ago or a few years ago, thought uh, Angels with Filthy Souls was a real movie. And uh, it's not. We shot it. I'm going. One, two, ten. <laughs> Filming Home Alone was a particularly brutal shoot because 
it was, you know, we didn't have enough money to build all the sets. So being outside in Chicago in February, in the middle of the night, um, before even ski jacket technology is as good as it is today, was just brutal. The cameras froze on us several times. We were shooting with film. Um, so that was, those nights were brutal. My favorite days of filming were when we were warm inside on a set. So every day was really kind of a joy to shoot Home Alone, even if you're dealing with brutal you know, weather. It was always fun. Somebody would always make you laugh. And I think probably, if I have to nail it down to one day, a 24 hour day, it would be shooting with John Candy and Catherine O'Hara. John, we only had John Candy for one day. I had a few hits a few years ago. Uh, that's why, I, you know, just polka, 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 no? The, the fact that he gave us one day and we used 23 hours of that day to get everything we needed with John was amazing, but he also improvised 80% of that performance. And just seeing John come up with new ideas, just I was falling on the, on the floor with, you know, laughing. He was just amazing. I am trying to get home to my eight-year-old son. And now that I'm this close, you're telling me it's hopeless. When we were casting the film, I was a big fan of Second City Television. So two of my idols on that show were John Candy and Catherine O'Hara. And Catherine O'Hara was someone who I was dying to work with. And again, I was interested in, in her comedic side, which she's shown to br great brilliance in Sh Creek. But I was also uh, in, in love with her as an actor. And I wanted her to be able to tap into her emotion as an actor, because even on Second City, the various roles she played, you, could t you just knew that there was a deep emotional complexity there. So I wanted to, to combine both of those. That house is the only reason we started working this block in the first place. Ever since I laid eyes on that house, I wanted it. Who would have thought we would hire Joe Pesci for this kind of comedic role? I thought he would potentially say no. I knew Daniel Stern was very funny from films like Diner, but I didn't, I knew Pesci was, by the way, Pesci is hilarious in Marty Scorsese's pictures, The Goodfellas and Raging Bull, dark films, but he's hilarious. So when I asked him to do the movie, he said, yes, I was stunned. And he was game for the comedy. And those two just had a tremendous chemistry. I, th I think people love Home Alone bec because of a combination of two things. The comedy still works. It still makes kids, it makes 50 year olds laugh. But I think the comedy really still works. And I also think the emotional part of Home Alone is is very it's very emotional for people when when marley reunites with his son and granddaughter at the end of the movie it's not, it's just so incredibly touching i think people it it just ties into the holiday season that is a classic thank you chris appreciate your time fun digging into all those films i know what i'm gonna watch again this weekend how about you it'll be a hallmark movie for sure we'll see you next time bye for now thanks for watching and happy holidays This morning on Today Food, food writer and stylist chef Will Coleman is here. And we are so excited. He's got some great recipes for anyone who wants to ring in the new year with delicious finger food and a festive cocktail. And the best part is all these snacks can be served at any celebration, big <laughs> or small. Will, good morning to you. Good morning. I am so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I was going to ask you about that. This is your first time on the Today Show, and I know that it's been a long time in the making. It's been a long time in the making, and I couldn't be more than grateful to be having my debut on this fantastic Wednesday with y'all. We're happy to have you here. We couldn't be more excited that you're here, Will, and you've got three recipes for us. So what are we starting with? I have three delicious recipes to bring you into the new year. It's going to be a great year, and we're starting off with one of my favorite recipes, fried chicken. or making it to a small bite to bring it to your New Year's Eve brunches, to your dinner, to your appetizer, um, cocktail parties, whatever you want to bring it to. This recipe is for you. 
To start off, we have our buttermilk brine. I love using a buttermilk brine whenever I am frying chicken. It's simply buttermilk, spices, toss it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the fridge for about two to four hours or overnight for maximum flavor. The buttermilk makes tender chicken, juicy chicken. It can't be better than that. Hey, Will, what's the benefit of working with air chilled chicken? Yes, I love using air chilled chicken whenever possible. It's simply just better chicken. It preserves the juices in the chicken, creating a nice meal to have in your kitchen. But if you can't find air chilled chicken, no big deal. Regular chicken will do. Well, Will, do you change the oil out between the batches of chicken? How does that work? You know, so we're at the fried some chicken right now, y'all. We have our flour, which is all purpose flour. I'm adding in some of my favorite seasonings, onion powder, garlic, cayenne, paprika, all in there together. Mix it up, and I have my oil right here heating, actually, and this is the same oil that I used in some previous batches because my mama taught me that, you know, the more oil you use and the same oil you use, the more flavor packed in there. Um, <laughs> so I'm using this oil. It's been a couple times I've used it, but guess what? More and more flavor is occurring every time I use that oil. And, Will, you cook with hot sauce, too. How I need to know how hot is the hot in your hot sauce. <laughs> you know, I like to say I want to enjoy hot sauce. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to be burning my mouth so hot that I can't <laughs> yeah. enjoy my food. But I grew up on Red Frank's hot sauce. I think it's the superior hot sauce. I'm from Detroit, so I'm repping the hot sauce on Red Frank's. Mama Coleman, proud of you today as you're doing all of this. Let's talk about something sweet, if we can, pretty quickly. You've got, what is it, the cherry and goat cheese pies? Yeah, so we got some cherry goat cheese pies today. They're literally delicious. You can enjoy them for dessert, enjoy them for breakfast, or enjoy them all throughout the day. That's what I do. Um, and it's basically got some cherries. I got fresh cherries in here and also dried cherries. Also some candy ginger because I love ginger. And I'm going to spice them up with some cardamom, some cinnamon, some sugar, all going in that pot. I let the frozen cherries simmer a little bit so they can break down. And then I add my sugar, my spices, and a little bit of almond extract because... I'm obsessed with almond extract. So put that on the pot, put it on the stove, put it on, and guess what? Leave it alone for about five, seven minutes, and then you're all set. Well, I, I feel you on that. Let me follow up with you on the cardamom. What kind of flavor does that add? Because you don't typically put it in a pie, right? You know, sometimes you can put cardamom like in blueberry pie, but it's just a little bit. It creates this flavor of, mm, what's that? And whenever I'm cooking, I want people to be like, what's that? So just a little bit of cardamom takes it a long way and creates an amazing flavor in your food. When hey. I make something and my family says, what's that? It's not usually a good thing. <laughs> when you do hey. it, it's fantastic. What's that can be good or bad. Try to make it good. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Will, most people don't think about salt and pepper when they're doing their dessert, but I see some salt and pepper over there. How do you use it exactly? So I like to use savory and sweet ingredients in my baking just to add that what's that flavor in it. Um, so I like to add the salt and pepper and the sugar all into one bowl. And then when it's time for me to make my pastries, you can see right here I have my filling in it. I have my goat cheese on top. And I put my puff pastry right on top. And I like to just press it with my fingers to create a little crimp. But you can also use a classic fork to get the other um, look of a crimp. Once that's done, I like to do an egg wash on that baby to get nice. that nice golden brown color in the oven. And then hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper and sugar all on top. It creates this beautiful color. It creates this beautiful texture. As you can see, the salt and pepper goes a long way. And you also you can use that salt and pepper and sugar um, on your cocktail glasses for the rim. Will, you have got our mouths watering. Thank you so much, uh, and very, very happy New Year to you as well. For everybody at home to get your hands on Will's recipes, head over to today.com slash food. This morning on Mega Head Monday, how to turn our le weekend leftovers into a festive holiday brunch. We're so excited here to help us is Manessa Lachey, actress, mom of three, and I can say this because I know him better half to singer, <laughs> Nick Lachey. She's out with a new book all about making memories called Life from Scratch. Family traditions that start with you. Vanessa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you guys. Good yeah. morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, good morning. This is a book not only for people who can cook, for people who can't cook, and it's about tradition. 
So what did you want to get out there? The base of the book is traditions, and it was so sweet talking backstage. Jill was like, this is Jill-proof. I can do this. (laughs) Yes, I think that the recipes in this book are to encourage you to get into your kitchen, to start hanging out with your family, with your friends, put on some music, maybe pour a cocktail if you want. And then food, the kitchen is the heart of the Mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. So making dishes that encourage you to have those Christmas Eve, you know, um, parties or sure. that Thanksgiving festive night with your family and not be overwhelmed by by chefing it up. By right. just yeah. having fun in the kitchen. You've got so, some great shortcuts. Yeah. This is uh, Brooklyn's brunch casserole. This is my daughter Brooklyn's brunch casserole. I know all of y'all at home have a version of this. This is Brooklyn's version. So we're going to start over here. You're going to brown the sausage mm-hmm. and then keep the keep the grease in it and add uh, about a half go. chopped onion. That's more so. Do you okay, want to I'll do that yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. And then what we, why this is Brooklyn's is because we take just store bought biscuits. So oh. I'm out there for you, moms. Gotta make this easy. <laughs> and the store bought biscuits come in obviously a circle. Right. We just take it and we quarter it. Oh. This you can give your kid a butter knife, and mm-hmm. this is something they can do, which Brooklyn does. And then I have her take the quarters and pop them in wherever she wants. Mm-hmm. So she feels like she's part of the process. While right. I'm over the stove, she's over here doing the do you biscuits. You grease this first. Before? You're gonna prepare the dish. Mm-hmm. Um, I love getting a stick of butter and just like. Do it. You could spray, that's what everyone does, but the stick of butter is a fun one too. Then you're gonna bake this for a little bit, par okay. bake it, like eight to 10 minutes. Okay. Um, it was eight minutes in my first oven at our house in California. It's 12 minutes at our house in Hawaii. Oh, so just know your oven. Yeah, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so then once you have the biscuits, you're gonna take it out while they're still warm. And actually, you're gonna put in first your, right over there, the sausage uh, onion mixture. It's already nice. cooked. So I'm just gonna put it all over, mix it up. That looks good right there. Right there. Then you're just gonna add the egg because that's what's gonna be the binder. Is that just eggs? This is just egg and about a a quarter to a half cup of milk, whatever to your liking. Mm -hmm. I do a quarter. And then you're going to put this in the oven, bake it for another 15 minutes, right. take it out, add some cheese, and bam! Joe, Joe, Joe and I got started. We're, He's yeah, out of control. Oh, wow. <laughs> but actually, this is a 10. You're I, I love breakfast casserole, yeah. and I yeah. love the biscuit uh, No, no, addition. no. It's so easy. And then it's a biscuit. That's what my kids love. So I used to do it with um, potatoes or uh, like a, a crescent roll bottom, but she just loves biscuits. And so I said, let's this, do it with biscuits. This, this would hit the spot, too, after a long night with mom just hanging out, yeah. with friends, partying. This would hit the spot. I'm right. all about the next yeah. one. I yeah. Monkey make it, bread. We make yeah. the sausage um, onion, sorry, the night before, and then Ugh. on Christmas morning, you just put it together. This so is, it's is so good. All right, it. what's going Monkey on here? Bread. Monkey this is bread. So, this is something that I love because it's such a great creative piece. You can see on the end there. So, again, with the biscuits, because my kids love biscuits, you're just going to chop up some biscuits and then your store bought biscuits, put them in a bag. This is what the kids get to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It might get a little messy, but and it's better cleaning up the, the kitchen than cleaning up a whole bunch of toys. In the bag is just what's in the bag? What's in the bag? You can smell it. Hey, what's in the bag? Man. Cinnamon and sugar. <laughs> and then again, again in a, a grease um, bunt pan, you're going to just pop them in. So you just literally, I like to separate them in the bag so you can mm-hmm. get the, the sugar and the cinnamon all around oh, it. Goodness. You're going to do your first layer there, just mm-hmm. pop them all in. Then you're going to layer in, we just do raisins because my kids love okay. raisins. But if I'm making it for Nick and his friends, I add the walnuts because he loves some walnuts. Ooh. Nick loves this recipe? Nick loves this. He loves everything I make, which that's is like nice. the best. Yeah. Even if he's lying, he doesn't tell me. So that's a good husband <laughs> I move. I love yes. that. Little, little chef note there. Love everything your wife right, makes. And then, um, so then you're going to put that in. Then you're going to yeah. add. Obviously, when you have all the biscuits, you're going to add, oops, I need to stir this up. Because this is butter, more butter, sorry, yes, of y'all. Course. And some more sugar. Uh, yes. This is why the kids love it. I know. These, are, these aren't healthy. This is just easy, fun, and family friendly. Then you're going to pop the it holidays. in the oven. You're going to let it cook for 30, 40 minutes, let it chill. Then you're going to turn it over once it's chilled, and it comes out oh, like this. That and looks everyone, good. Everyone just comes. It's like a breakaway. This is a breakaway mm, bread. This is and you, just, you just break it away and you eat. I, I love that. I love it because it's all low carb. That's why oh, I look at it. Right. This is healthy. Still look very healthy. Very <laughs> healthy. Vanessa, thank you so much. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. You here. Thank you. Again, the book is called Life from Scratch. And for these recipes, head to today.com slash mm. food. That was fantastic. This thank is amazing. Guys. We will be right back.
Thanksgiving is just one week away, and we have a side dish that will spice up your menus. We have self-taught vegan, Chef Priyanka Knight. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. She's gonna, How you're are gonna, you? We're, we're great. We're great. You're going to make your chili maple skillet cornbread. That's a mouthful. From, and it's from your new cookbook, The Modern Tiffins. This is a two-part recipe. Let's start with the cornbread. Talk about what ingredients we need and then how this, uh, how this differ, differs from traditional cornbread. Certainly. So right here, we just have half a cup of all-purpose flour. There's going to be a lot of the standard basic ingredients in this that you would see in a cornbread. So we also are adding three-fourths cup of cornmeal. Okay. I'm using yellow cornmeal. Mm -hmm. We're adding a little bit of sugar. And I love this recipe because you could basically just dump everything in the bowl and mix it and bake it. Easy. Um, we're adding some baking powder. And we're also going to add a pinch of salt. And now the Indian-ish ingredients that come into this are garam masala. So mm -hmm. this is, I know, very popular amongst people. And I actually love it in this dish because it's a lot of those warm spices with an Indian cuisine that I think go really well with holiday items. You know what? So it's interesting. You can seafood. taste it in there. I just had a bite. because yeah, She it's, ate it. She ate it before you started. I did. It's savory. <laughs> <laughs> she, she ate it before. She goes, I was watch curious. me. I'm going to eat it before. <laughs> I love that. That means, that means it looks tempting. You mm -hmm. want to eat it. So... The next ingredient is one chopped green chili. This could be an Indian green chili or a Serrano chili. Mm -hmm. We need some spice in there, there because go. I just can't live without it. And then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of fresh coriander leaves. I love that sort of freshness, that brightness it brings to it. And then we're gonna add our liquids, which is basically a little bit of plant milk. You wanna make sure to use unsweetened, mm -hmm. and I'm using oat milk. And then a little bit of neutral oil. So this is just I'll try a vegetable vegan. oil. This is vegan, correct, yes. yeah. Now, you put all this in a cast iron skillet in front of us. It's in front of us in a cast iron skillet. Does it have to be cooked in that? It does not have to be cooked in that. I just think they're really cute, and they're really mm -hmm. festive, especially during the holidays, and it adds a really great crust. But it can cook, be cooked in any oven-safe bowl. So, so good. Even I'm the aftertaste. I feel like I just had, like, a meal meal. Tell me what's on the top. This garlic, is this a garlic butter? Yes, it's a garlic chili maple butter. Um, which I'm going to show you right after mm. I get this into the skillet. So you basically yeah. get all of the batter in. And this is already pre-buttered with vegan butter. Okay. And then you're going to get this into the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. Okay. So I'm just going to put that in there. Mm -hmm. And we actually have one ready for you. The magic of television. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! Now you put butter on top, right? Yes. Now why so, do you do that? Well, I do it because once the cornbread just cools down for a few minutes and if you scoop that butter right on top, mm -hmm. it'll melt through. So once everyone cuts a slice, they get a little bit of that glistening so, butter. Yeah, yeah. That is so yeah, great. So for the butter, we're going to use uh, some softened vegan butter and we're going to add some fun ingredients to this to spice it up. Okay. So we're going to add some more green chilies and a clove of garlic. That's why Chanel but, was like, woo, this is hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know it was coming. It was good, though. That's why you're I'm good. sorry. Yeah, I should have warned you. It's a little bit, you know, it's got a little spicy. Kick. But yeah. Yeah. We're also going to add a little bit of mango powder. This mm. is also called umtra powder. This is a little bit of my secret ingredient in this. It has a little bit of tang and smokiness okay. that you kind of find familiar at a barbecue restaurant. So I wanted to emulate that. Oh. And then some maple syrup. Mm. I mean, this, this is complicated for you and I. I mean, I not, <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff going on I in know. here, but it's all, beautiful. All the things. What is that? What was and that last part? That was some fresh coriander, some salt, and some pepper. Let me hold it up and so you basically you just blend this up. And then what I do, I, I'm going to spare you the food processor noise, is I actually put it into like a deep cup so then the butter can fill into it. And then use a mini scoop. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> scoop it out. You can be generous with your butter. It's okay. the holidays. Wow. I never claimed this was healthy. Uh, <laughs> well, this is why people love you on Instagram, though, because they see these and then they go home and or they try it right I always with think you. everything is vegan is healthy. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, no, I, I like to <laughs> indulge. I, I do like to indulge, so. It's Thanksgiving. And then we're just going to scoop that right on top. So 
It looks mm, like it's like ice. Here, let me show everybody at home because I okay. messed mine up by eating mine. But, but so look at this. That's what happens when it melts. Priyanka, thank you so much for this incredibly creative. creative. That's yeah. right. Incredibly creative. You can find out more on today.com slash food to get actually this entire recipe. I love it. Thank you, Priyanka. Beautiful. And I like your yellow this morning as well. Thank you so much and happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. You yeah. can check out our Today Show Instagram page to see more from Priyanka and other creators. We will be right back. Cheat Day Friday. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here to make hey. some holiday party classics Happy for our, holidays. our Happy very own holidays. Studio 1A party. <laughs> yes. All all right. Right. We are going to have a party. So spinach artichoke chip is like my weakness. Like, <laughs> but I usually have chips with it and I can clear out a whole bowl. You oh, come to the right table. <laughs> so what are we going to do today to make it a little healthier? Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was lighten up classic rich and indulgent spinach artichoke dip. Yes. And that's what we're going to do. But then I wanted to bring it to the next level okay. and make a pizza out of it. Ooh, so this is a me. spinach artichoke dip cheesy pizza. Okay. Ooh. So we're starting with the classics for uh, the artichoke dip. This is going to be a 10 ounce frozen drained spinach. Okay. I just microwaved it to thaw it out and then I drained it. Okay. And I'm adding it into what's over here. We have a can of quartered um, artichoke hearts. Okay. We have, here's all of the ingredients. Oh, we have so light a mayonnaise, right? A little bit of salt, red pepper flakes, oregano, garlic, and Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to mix this up. While I was mixing this up, I put mm. into the oh, oven wow. portobello mushrooms. So oh. we're doing a low carb pizza here. Mm. And then oh you my just goodness, this take. Is delicious. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Can I be honest? I thought it would be okay. This is really good. Oh, I'm so I glad. Thought, okay, okay, fine. Fine. And then that, this is a light mayo that I put in okay. here. And then you just put you um, put this in the oven with Doesn't a little bit of mozzarella. Doesn't this taste too good to be true? Like it tastes, this is delicious. Tastes naughty. It's half the calories. It's half the fat, and mm. it's packed with fiber and protein. And for people so that want good. that crispy sort of pizza-like crust, mm -hmm. yeah, you can look at this. Do you put it on English muffins? Yes. Oh, you oh, put it it's on a whole grain English muffin half. And, and it's, it's filling. ridiculously I mean, it's easy to whip this up. And it's satisfying because there's so much flavor in there. That's really good. Right. I know that mu wow. that mushroom is really good too. All right. Okay, Delicious. pigs in a blanket. Pigs. I've been dying to mm. take this one on, so this is Dylan very loves exciting pigs in a blanket. I'm obsessed with pigs in a blanket. So we're going to make a version that I'm calling phyllo dough wrapped sausages. Okay. So this is frozen it does phyllo have the dough. Same ring to it, but <laughs> let's call it pigs in a blanket. Okay. Well. How's about that? So we took I took phyllo dough here. I put two on top of each other. You can get this in the freezer section in any grocery store, and I misted it with a little bit of oil spray. Then. 
any lean poultry sausage. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm using a smoked chicken apple, okay. Okay. and I take each of the um, links and I'm cutting them into fours. Okay. So four, and then you put them at the side of your phyllo dough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to brush on a little bit of oh. Dijon mustard. Oh. And you're adding so much flavor to it. And then Thank all you. I'm going to do is roll it up. Just roll it up and, and then do you And bake then it? you put, yeah, I put it on the baking mm. sheet, seam side down, oh. 400 for about 15 minutes. This is really good. And this, i got to get this dipping sauce for you. Wait, I want somebody to try it so you guys don't think that we're crazy. This Dave, is a creamy mustard sauce. Come over here. you got to come try this. I feel like you guys see us and you probably think we're like, mm, mm, mm. But we're just serious. Just really David, quickly. come over I here. I want somebody else so you guys know that we're not crazy. This is really, really good. <laughs> what do you think? It's really is good, it? right? Oh, it's very good. I tried oh, the mustard sauce. Really try really the mustard sauce. The sauce. <laughs> so good. Go for it. Mm. Right. Wow. Right? I didn't, I didn't think you could do it with pigs in a blanket. I was like, me neither. You try. Have fun. But yeah. this, this is, is like delicious. Isn't that easy? Yeah. Put mm. a little toothpick in and. Wow. Okay. How are you gonna bring us home? Okay. I'm gonna bring this home. Bring it home. With. Eggnog, but we're not just making mm -hmm. a lower calorie, lightened up, healthified eggnog. Okay. We're going to make a chai spiced eggnog. Mm. So this is cool, and the house smells so delicious when you make okay. this. I have four cups of 1% low fat milk in here, but you could use whatever milk you want. Okay. And I threw in three chai tea bags. Oh, the tea bags. So what's okay. happening is, while this is steeping, it's infusing cinnamon and cloves and ginger Ooh, and cardamom. It's so yummy. Okay. Then you just throw in a slurry of, this is a little bit of cornstarch okay. with mm. some of the reserved milk. What does okay. that do? Just thicken it up? It's going to thicken it up. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dash of nutmeg okay. and a dash of salt mm -hmm. and a little bit of maple syrup. Okay. Okay. And then once this starts to thicken up, okay. we're going to add in your vanilla extract, a little okay. bit of vanilla. The whole house will smell good, won't it? Yeah. I mean, it spill smells out. so good. You Why do you have to wait to put in vanilla? Because um, some of the flavor will evaporate out oh, if you cook it okay. too long. So you put that in at the end, and then you chill it overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is insanely delicious. I, of course, a little bit of whipped cream. Dylan, taste this. And a little this. bit of whipped cream goes. It's like a milkshake, right? So there's right? no alcohol in this. There's no alcohol in this. What but of course you can. You, you can wait, spike it. What alcohol would you add to it? So because of the chai seasonings, I would probably say to add either whiskey or oh bourbon instead of rum. Okay, is I'm this not nice? just saying this. <laughs> would any, please, guys, just come try this. Who wants some eggnog? Please <laughs> come try. Leslie, come on in. Pigs in the back. So delicious. Thank you. Because I cheers, everybody. We're feasting. You guys are all watching. I told you we were having a party in Studio One A. But it's really good. Good. You oh, have to check out these recipes, and I promise you'll use them so at your next yes. holiday party. Just go to today.com. Right? Did you try it? Did it? Oh, oh, yeah. winners. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Today food, we are tackling dinner and dessert and drinks too, and we're keeping it all vegetarian. Here to help is Mary McCartney. She's a cookbook author and host of the Emmy-nominated cooking show, Mary McCartney Serves It Up on Discovery Plus, where she cooks with some of her famous friends. Oh, and she happens to be the daughter of someone else we all know, Sir Paul McCartney. So good morning, good Mary. Morning. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. So 
you are cooking vegetarian for us, but we don't need to, you know, be scared of that. It's fast, <laughs> easy, and you're going to be, I think you're going to be impressed. Already. Well, so they're first, already eating, and they have good. been eating for the last two minutes, so. So this is a caponata skillet pizza, um, and I'm starting off, it's like an Italian sort of inspired topping, mm -hmm. which is one eggplant, some red onion, which adds some color. So you don't color. peel the eggplant. You can just, just chop it up into little bite-sized okay. pieces. Fry it off, uh, saute it in a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil. Then I'm going to add a little bit of chopped uh, canned tomatoes. Okay. Oh. Tomatoes. It's tomatoes just nice and juicy, too. and this topping is like a real meal. It makes it very substantial. So this will be the sauce and the topping all mixed in the one. It's so quick, and okay. you, you, you want that nice little sizzle and bubble mm -hmm. that we're getting. Oh, that smells then really delicious. Then I've got three cloves of garlic, mm. and good. it's adding flavor. Uh, and I love it. The olives. Kalamata olives chopped mm -hmm. in half. Mm -hmm. Adds a nice you can saltiness. use any kind of olives though, really. Okay. As long as do not leave the pips in. <laughs> <laughs> you Don't. bite into that, it just doesn't have the same. You do not want any broken teeth. Yes. And uh, I like a little bit of chili heat. Mm -hmm. So I'm gorgeous. going to really add mm -hmm. chili flakes, everything, you know, what you'd have in Whatever. your store cupboard. Okay. And depending how spicy you want it, you can add or take away. Okay, so that's and our topping. That's literally it. And are you making the dough also? Yes. Okay. So that just cooks off for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. You could even put it on like that. Now the dough is a flatbread, which has uh, all-purpose flour, mm -hmm. a little bit of baking powder, just so it kind of puffs up and has a little lift when it okay. cooks. What else are you adding now to I'm it? Now I'm going to stir in a quarter of a cup of unsweetened plant-based milk. Whatever as long as it's like. unsweetened, okay. you can use oat, cashew, almond, <laughs> and I'm adding enough, like a quarter of a cup. Okay. I want to Just make sure enough. we have time for dessert. So oh, once that's all that mixed in. together, this olive oil. And some olive oil so it's nice and glossy. Mm. Then that will come together into a nice into dough. Mm -hmm. Literally, you don't need to leave it. It's, it's ready really to go. Good. I would want this on so many other things, too. Roll it out. Where are you going to cook that? In this in pan? In the skillet, oh, oh yeah. Goodness. So literally, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a wine bottle or... <laughs> or Which is always nice. Any bottle you have. Then this would go... You roll it to the side of the skillet and then... Cook it on a nice hot skillet for three so minutes good. each side. And then you throw the topping Chuck on. The topping You've on. got it. Dylan, try this. Yes. And then try the dessert because. And I like oh, yeah. to just put all the topping in the middle like oh, this. Wow. Just shove it on, and That's then amazing. push it out to the side so it's got nice height. That is so. You know what? And fresh. And then a like even if you're not a vegetarian, this is something for yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. All I of was, my cooking is more aimed towards non-vegetarians. Interesting. Okay. I was skeptical about this dessert because of oh, the let secret me show ingredient. You. Let yes. Me show I, you. I, I am a no-bake dessert, so we should be no able to bake chocolate this up quickly. The mm. thing that there's no whipping of cream, no like egg whites. It's um, it's silken tofu. What? Silken tofu. tofu, a it's bar tofu. of chocolate, melted. Melted. Okay. That's just tofu. In a there? little bit of vanilla. Now I'm curious. And uh, hot chocolate powder. Oh, really? Hot chocolate powder. So then you don't need to add any other sugar so or anything. That all whip it together. Wow. And it goes really loosey. Wow. And the thing with okay. the that's literally it. The thing oh, wow. with the tofu is know, right? it's a flavor carrier and what it's kind a texture. Of tofu? It's silken it's tofu, like silk. they use okay. a lot of Japanese cooking. Oh my God. So you don't, right it doesn't in. taste like tofu. Yeah. All right, this is delicious. And then you, you don't even have to Shove bake it. Shove it in here and literally you can decorate it and eat it. But That's I would it. probably put it in the fridge for 15 mm -hmm. minutes to set. Wow. Just, All right, thank you so you much. The new season so of Mary good. McCartney serves it up. It's streaming now on Discovery Plus. And of course, Get these recipes. Just go to today.com slash food. We'll have for to put the drink recipe on the website. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gotta try the cocktail. This is Cheers. This is for you. Little M's bit of Cheers. Yummy. Thank Cheers. you for having me. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Good Friday morning. We are tracking a major storm moving across the country. And it could impact your weekend plans. It's December 8th. This is today. Wild weather.